sweet songs they have sung for a thousand years. This is Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank for the week of Monday, February 27th, 2012. Hi, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, number 48. 48. Let's call it 48. Um... On today's episode, I interview my friend, a uh, fellow comedian, um, Dean Del Rey. He used to be a musician. He made his living like as a, like a musician. He just went into comedy a few years ago. But um, he toured all over, the, all over the country and the world, I guess, with like some big people, and then he went off on his own. So I just sort of asked him, talked to him about that, what it's like to be like a, a looper for music. I have this version. I don't know where I get the word looper. I think it's from like, I think it's from golf. But just like people who just get by at whatever job they do. Not like the movie stars, you know, it'd be like the working actor. Or not like, it wouldn't be like, if it's a fighter, it wouldn't be like Muhammad Ali. It'd be like some guy who's like 18 and 12 for his career. Those are loopers. People who just get by, they make a living at it for a while. I like hearing what that's like, because those are most of the people in any sort of job. Anyway, so we talked about that, and then we got into uh, talking about uh, how uh, I steal music all the time and how wrong that is. Um. Uh, anyway, but I, I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. That's that's the way. Whatever. We get into it. It's fine. And then we just talk about music and the stuff we like. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. But um, if you're into music, then I guess listen to this episode. Everyone's into music, right? Everyone. Um. All right. So that's it. So uh, in terms of like my stand up and stuff, I have my story. First and foremost, my storyteller show. This is not happening. Presents. It's this Tuesday, the uh, the 28th. Tomorrow. February 28th at the Improv. This is not happening. Present shame. It's all stories about shame. Me, Bobby Lee from Mad TV, uh, Mary Lynn Rice Cub from, uh, what show is she on? 24 and that old girls guitar club show, a group she used to be in. Uh, Johnny Pemberton from, from, he's on some MTV show. I don't know. These people are all good. Oh, and then Dylan Brody's there. He did my first show. And Moshe Kasher, who we did this shame topic in, um, in Portland and he was, uh, one, it's one of the best stories ever. So um, I didn't record it or anything, so I fucked up as always. So uh, we're going to do it um, this week. He's going to do the story again. So uh, it should be really come. It should be really good. I mean, come. It's $5. It's only $5, so please come out. The Improv on Melrose, uh, February 28th. And the one after this, I don't know what the topic is yet, but they're all good. But whatever the topic is, it's March 27th, whatever Tuesday that is. So um, uh, now I have to make sure if it's March 27th. This is maybe, yep, it is. Um, so anyway, so that's it in terms of uh, in terms of the, the this is not happening show. Um, other stand up, I'm going to Easton, Maryland in March. These are all March gigs. I got Easton, Maryland. I got Vancouver at the end of March. Um, Dallas, the Addison Improv. Uh, what else? Philadelphia at Helium and uh, and San Diego. Um, these are all in March and April. Uh, in Easton, it's it's at the Avalon Theater. It's Avalon Theater. TRE.com or just go to my website. If you go to my website on the on the right, there's a link for all my upcoming dates. So please go there because that's, that's what I do. I'm a stand up. So that's my thing. I'm a looper for stand up. So like I put this out, I do all this stuff just so people come see me. So please come see me. And if you know people in that area, tell them to go out if they're cool, not if they're fucking, not if they're asshole types. I don't, whatever. They don't need to come out. Um, so that's it. Easton, Vancouver, Addison, Philadelphia, all over. Um, oh, and Toronto um, for the Canadian Comedy Fest. There's some sort of comedy festival there March 23rd. But they haven't put the fucking dates up yet on their goddamn website, so it's not up for sale yet. So that'll be up for sale hopefully this week. I don't know. It's very annoying. The show, show's like three weeks out. Whatever. Um, that's it. Oh, oh, oh. Also, if you're listening to these, please subscribe on iTunes or on Stitcher or on um, or you just go to my website and they're all there, arethegreat.com. I'm also trying to make an a easier to find uh, link to all the episodes, like by topic or something. Not fine. I'm trying to build one. So my web lady is, um, is uh, going to try to build it. She will. She'll get it done. So then it'll be better. But until then, just if you hear about one, you can just enter my search engine on my website and then it'll take you right there or a comedian or a, or a uh, topic. Um, and then also speaking of podcasts, because that's what I'm doing right now. I, I started a new podcast with my friends, uh, Jason Tebow and, and Sam Tripoli. They're both been on my podcast before. Tripoli was on like 
21 or 22 or 20, one of those. Um, and then Tebow was on one earlier than that. I forget what number it is. But anyway, regardless, um, we started a sports podcast. It's at the Toad Hop Network. Um, it's called Punch Drunk. It's just a three. It's just it's different than this. It's not the same format at all. It's just it's us talking about sports, but in our own like you know degenerate way about whatever sports we want. It's fun. It's just three guys. It's kind of like the conversations we have in the back of the comedy store. Um, we just get into sports talk, and that ends with us like making fun of each other. Or just you know talking about ridiculous stuff. It's it's based on sports. We veer off as much as as much as this podcast veers off from whatever topic I'm supposed to do. So uh, man, this is already five and a half minutes. All right, I gotta wrap this one up. So um, so go. Uh, it's every Tuesday, and we film it. It's it's on uh, it's on uh, video too, so you can watch the video. Go to toadhopnetwork.com. Toad like a toad hop like what it does. Network.com. It's me, Sam Tripoli, and Jason Tebow. And it's fun. We did one episode so far. So it's, we're going to do it every Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then we have like special uh, analysts and stuff, correspondents. Like Bertie Stevens is going to be our uh, baseball correspondent because he always goes to Major League Baseball games and just fucks around. Steve Renazisi, who moved to New York and betrayed all of us in Los Angeles, is going to be our um, New York City uh, sports radio report reporter. Um, and I don't know. We got a bunch of other stuff. It should be fun. It should be fun. So go tune that into that. If you want more of this, then tune into that because it's similar. Fuck six and a half. Okay, so that's it. So that's it, everybody. Um, please sit back, uh, relax, and enjoy Ari Shapiro's Skeptic Tank episode forty-eight. Let's call it the the musical looper. When was that? And that was like, I don't know, ni- early 90s or something when it yeah. first opened. And, like, and that was when beers were, I'm not kidding you, a buck, 52 bucks or so for like a Budweiser. And then an import was yeah. three bucks. Really? And they were exactly double. I mean, I guess that's inflation. But over that, like, that was more of like, you're paying to be in here. To you don't there. like it. Get the fuck out. I remember going home once. It was like 2000, maybe 2000. He might have been before 9-11. I don't know. Maybe 2001. Maybe right around there. I went back to D.C. and I, I got I got a beer and they said six bucks. And I was like, this is not the Sunset Strip. Yeah. You, you don't, you're fucking Adams Morgan. You can't charge prices like this. <laughs> yeah, six bucks in D.C. That's completely yeah. ridiculous. But now it's like that everywhere. It's yeah, everywhere. and that's bucks. for like a Paps. Sometimes, yeah, those are supposed to be a dollar. That's the thing. Those are supposed to be the point of the That's the Paps. dollar beer. It's not that it's good. A dollar, maybe two. Yeah. But it's like, it's not good. Not at all. And they sell it for like, oh, six bucks. People want this. I'm like, we only want it because it's a dollar. That's why you bought it. You were like, we could get more. Beer. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because like when I was young, you could get this thing called the Schaefer Sport Pack. Yeah, what it is that? It was 18 beers for two bucks. Oh, that is sporty. Yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> for $2? For two bucks. Schaefer Sport Pack. It was like- well, just you know, fermented like water? Two, eight, yeah. And you got no, no buzz at, at all. It was weird, but you felt like, yeah, we're getting a shitload of beer, but it didn't do anything to you. That's this pot I just got. It was the same thing where I'm like, oh, two for one and five gram eights. That's pretty good. And you smoke and you're like, I got to smoke this whole goddamn a gram and a half just to get a buzz. Man, I you, wonder. You're back smoking weed. You stopped for a while, right? 13 days. 13 days. And you were, yeah. did you feel way better? No, none of that mattered at all. Yeah. You told me it took six months to clear up your brain, right? That's right. And then yeah. I could start remembering stuff great. Yeah. I didn't put in long enough for that. But I did have crazy dreams when I was asleep. Yeah. Um, it was easier to sleep. I didn't have to wake up in the middle of the night. But I figured that out later anyway. It's like just smoke indicas before you go to bed. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure not to smoke sativa because when that wears off, you just pop wide right awake. Yeah, when I was young, indica was the only weed they had around. I mean, yeah. I mean that was the weed you wanted. You I didn't figured, want the brown I, weed. I figured it out. It's because sativa takes longer to, to, to grow. Right. And people are like, we don't have that time. Yeah. This shit's good. I can make the same amount. 
in and indica grew five. huge like oh, giant really? cola buds oh. that were really heavy so you would have these huge buds that were like this fucking long yeah. and they would weigh tons and you'd make way more money oh, or the sativa is. had just little baby buds on the ends you know yeah sativa i think i feel like it's caught on more here in socal or norcal just because like well california in general is like you know the fruity people <laughs> the, yeah yeah the, like we enjoy our fine wines and our you know our fine weeds yeah they like good weed yeah. and good wine healthy stuff um yeah i didn't get to that long in it where i was like could see the effects i didn't wasn't remembering more right. or less it was how old a, are you 37 37 yeah i'm 46 so yeah really yeah oh, damn bro yeah. yeah i'm old man yeah you don't look that old i'm fucking i feel old though which is really weird like, because uh, I started comedy at 44. What? Yeah. I would advise anyone not to do that. I know. <laughs> you know, and... So you've been uh, comedy three, for two years, three years? Two years now. Two oh, years, wow. two months. Oh. But it's... Um, I, I'm, f I'm tired, like, all the time. Yeah. Because you got to be out all night. Yeah, you got you to pretty much stay out till one, too. Especially yeah. early when you get late nights at the store. Yeah, when, you, when you're starting out and then you're out so to... 8 o'clock open mics or fucking 1 a.m. spots at a club. That's it. And then you go... Uh, then after that, you go eat or something. Yeah, Get home up. about 3. And then I get up the next day and, like, I'm just in a fog. And Why don't all you just get up here. at noon? Like I ever. do get up at noon, but I'm still uh. tired. Because I'm like... Because you're old. I, yeah, I'm old. Yeah. And I'm used to, like, 10 hours of sleep. Really? Yeah, like that's what I used to do before comedy. I find I need less now. I started with like eight or nine. Yeah. And now I'm like at seven or six. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm good. Yeah, because I always trip on old people. They sleep like four hours and then yeah, they're how up. how do they do that? Less I, energy spent? I don't know, man, because I need more sleep, it feels like. Maybe they're just trying to get to heaven faster. They're not <laughs> sleeping. They can see it now. It's, it's on their radar. I, I don't like getting old. I mean, I don't mind it. I like the, the life I've had, yeah. but I don't like, like I feel beat up. You, do. you know, like, yeah, like I ride a motorcycle every day. So oh, yeah. I've done all my spots on a motorcycle. So my shoulders are fucked up. You all know, your spots on a motorcycle. Yeah. Like I go to all the comedy uh, spots. Uh, uh, okay. So I'm on it all night. You that know, fucks up your shoulder. Well, yeah. Cause you're grabbing a clutch for years, your left hand. Uh, so I've got like this fucked up, like just worn out uh, shit in my shoulder. Yeah. But my mind is young. You know what I mean? Like I'm into great young shit. I'm not like all, Arr! You're into like new music and stuff? I like new music, you know. That's, that's most of it. That's most of it. It you is. Know? Then you figure out what clothes to wear after that and you hang out with whoever. But it's like, as soon as you start going like, man, my, my, my day's bands were better. It's like, no, yeah. everybody's day's bands are the exact that's right. same. Yeah, it's you true. However, I'm starting to hear the stuff you. on classic rock now yeah. that I remember older people saying, this is bullshit music. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And like, now uh, it's on their station. Like Guns right N' Roses is classic rock now. Yeah. Guns it Roses, is Nirvana. Yeah, fuck yeah, 20 like, years. Your music today. And now everyone's like, well, that was great music. But it's like back then we sort of knew it wasn't because everyone was telling us it wasn't. So when people are shitting on like, not Bieber, because that's like super hip, like teeny pop. Yeah, yeah, that's but different. like anyone that plays or whatever, Weezer, let's say, it's like, yeah, this is great music. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, I like, if it's good, I like it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I love shit like Wilco. You know? Yeah, I never got into Wilco. Yeah, I, I get into guys that are around a long time, but they're not like super famous, yeah. you know. But I they're love more fun. It feels better that way when you're where the only people who knows them. Yeah, exactly. I love the yeah, yeah, yeahs when they hit. Uh -huh. uh, I think Karen O is like the best front person I've seen in years. As far as a woman, I've never seen someone so radical. Did that video for Maps? Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, hell yeah. It was just a shot of her and she sang, and then just slowly started tearing up and crying. So as great. She was singing. Yeah. Everyone I told that to was like, you got to see that video, and and everyone. I think I had a girlfriend at the time. And she was like, why? Everybody tells me that. Like, why? I'm like, just see it. I'm like, that's what everybody says. Just see it. <laughs> yeah. It was so She's good. a killer front person. Uh, Carboni, I think, went out with her. Who, really? You remember P. Carboni? Or was he already gone before you started? Uh, I don't know him. But man, oh, if man. he did. You know, because she dated, which is really weird. This is like high school or, or She, she dated um, oh. uh, Spike Jones, who was married to Sofia Coppola. And I love Sofia Coppola. He dumps her, and that's basically what almost, I mean, uh, her film, uh, some, what is it? Out lost of, in Translation? Lost in Translation is kind of uh, built like on getting that. dumped by someone more talented? Well, they were, they were in Japan, supposedly. Uh, yeah. He was uh, out there for Fuji Rock. Yeah. And then kind of, I think, was hanging out with her or something. Fuji Rock. I yeah, like that's that. like a huge festival out there, like the Coachella of Japan. Really? Yeah, and then I guess they kind of hooked up or something. I don't know. Man. And then so he dated her after. 
They did who, Karen O after. Karen O after. Which oh, yeah, because he helped put that album together with her for uh, Where the Wild Things that's Are. That's right. He directed and got her that's to do right. it. Was he already fucking her then? He was fucking her before that. God now they're just damn friends. It. Nobody gets anything for free. <laughs> Every time somebody gets ahead, you're like, oh, they're super talented. Maybe that's why. No, they were fucking. Yeah. yeah. Damn yeah. it. Yep. They're best friends or they grew up in the same block. Something. Something. Fuck. We need a friend that hits it, you know? Yeah. Well, speaking of Coachella, that's why I want to talk to you. That's why I invited you in. I want to talk about that your music. What did you do? Uh, I played music 25 years. What, were you in like bands? Or yeah, I was in just... bands. I brought a couple CDs. You'll hate them, but I just to show you. The music? But... or the? Oh, I thought that was your comedy CDs. I'm like, no, no, the music. I don't, I don't have any comedy <laughs> CDs. Um, yeah, I was in a metal band when I started, of course, young. You know, I grew up in the Bay Area, like uh, Metallica and all that was my, uh, you know, I worship. That was who's big then? Metallica, um, they're only a couple years older than me, yeah. but they seemed way older when I was hanging around them. What? Uh, they were, do you know what they were they doing? They were just kind of older, big dudes. They're really tall. They're older. They're oh. drinking Jaeger. Like, people didn't drink Jaeger back then. They were just really radical, weird dudes. Yeah, when I knew about Metallica, I mean, I'm probably t- you know, 10 years, 8 years after you, but like... They were like, eh, whatever. But then right. I heard the old stuff. I was like, oh, this is almost like punk. Yeah, oh, 100%. Like, because, you know, at San Fran, you had the Mabue Gardens, which was the biggest that? punk club besides CBGB's. Oh. There was nothing bigger. You had Dead that Kennedys. That's right. It was the West Coast CBGB's. Magoo, what is it? Uh, it was called the Mabuhe Gardens, and okay. it was the weirdest Where place. Was it Berkeley? It, no, it was in San Francisco on Broadway. Yeah. And it was a Thai restaurant. And uh, huh. I, I think it was Jello uh, from Dead Kennedys. Biafra. Put on one, yeah, put on yeah. one show in there once. And the owner was this Thai dude named Ness. And he went, oh, shit, I can make gold mine. And that was it. The next day, it was a punk club. Oh. And they just started doing punk, man. I'm Did talking. Did keep serving Thai food? Nope. No, no more food. And he kept the logo still. Mabue Gardens, fine Thai food. Which was re- that, that probably was made it. it a cooler place, too. Where it's yeah. like, oh, this is interesting. And, I mean, they had them all. You know, Black Flag, early Devo. I'm talking Devo, yellow suits, weird shit. Devo's in San Fran? No, but they would come out and play. Everybody would play, like, you know, CBGBs. They would do, like... Um, uh, you know, Berkeley, they had a place over there. I uh, forget what it's called. And then they would do Mabue Gardens. These are like major punk uh, establishments, you know? Yeah. Gigi Allen. Yeah. All that shit, you know? Did you go watch shows there? I've see I seen a ton of those shows. Did you ever play there? I played there a million times, man. Really? But But I didn't play as a punk band. They would do a metal night also, which is where Metallica would kind of play. And then there was a club right across the street called The Stone, and that's really where Metallica really hit and took off at. Why'd you start playing metal? Well, when I was young, when I was, young, I was into, like, Accept, and uh, I was into, like, uh, early Scorpions, uh, well, metal bands. Yeah, I remember Scorpions. Yeah, what yeah. Were the big songs? Saxon. Uh, Scorpions had, like, uh, Blackout. Well, how did that go? Blackout! I really had a blackout. There's something else I remember from Scorpions. What well, is- they had a dumb hit like, there's no one like you. It was like, you know. Is, we're not going to take it? That wasn't Scorpions. No, that's uh, Twisted Sister, Fuck. which is terrible. But I figure Scorpions had one song that I knew that was like a radio hit. Oh, well, they, uh, what else Probably did they Probably even later. It would have been way later. I don't know. Yeah. I'll figure it out. But I mean, metal, metal was kind of big in San Fran. You had this band, Exodus. Uh, I remember, I remember which was them. really fucking big, and uh, and metal was really the uh, San Fran was the the ground zero of metal. Actually, was metal before punk or after punk? It was after punk. It was just okay. kind of like right after punk. You you went from like say Sex Pistols and uh, Ramones and and Clash, and then these guys just kind of took it into something different because you had this thing called the the. Uh, new metal British movement, you know, like the heavy metal British movement, which was like Saxon and these bands that uh, Metallica was listening to. And then they kind of yeah. formed it into their own thing. Was Sabbath up there? Sabbath. But they they were earlier, you know. This okay. stuff was like a Motorhead, Saxon. Yeah. I met uh, that guy Lemmy once. Yeah, Lemmy. I see him around. Really? Uh, yeah, at the, he's like, he's always he's at the... running around Hollywood. Yeah, he's at the uh, Rainbow really? all the time, yeah. God. I guess he lives around the corner from there. What a trippy dude, huh? I guess they, do those guys just keep going to those same bars? Yeah, yeah, Just that's like it. Dice keeps going to the coffee well, you, store? Yeah, you, you, you're you going to want to go where you can dress like him. I mean, look at him. He's yeah, but like, he can go anywhere at this point, right? Right, but I mean, there he can just go down, meet a girl, and leave. And you blend in, too. Yeah, you blend in. You're not what like... Were you telling me? That was you telling me that, right, about Steve Jones? 
Steve Jones, yeah. yeah. He, I, I had him on the show. He was awesome. He, he'd just go down there, park his motorcycle, take like his shirt off and hang out, and girls would just get on the bike, and he would ride away with them up to the hills, screw them, and then ride them back without talking to them. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> That's great. Just outside in the hills, or did he live up there? No, he lived up oh, there. Okay. Yeah, like, can you imagine just up in the, it's dark. Yeah, like I'm in a tree fort. Uh-huh. I've done that before where I've pulled over with with a girl that I'm with. I'm like, right, let's fuck right now. So yeah. you have to pull over and find a You can't just do it in front of somebody's yard. No. You got to find a big hedge or something. It seems like you always get caught, too. Really? You know, well, like, no, I've only done it a few times. I've never gotten caught. To what? me, it's yeah. like some kind of like a guy will be like, get out of here. Like you're in a neighborhood and a guy looks out like there's somebody out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know, <laughs> car fucking's weird. Though. I never got caught. I always try. I always almost forget to turn my lights off, though, before we did it. I was like, oh, fuck. I got to turn these off. <laughs> and where would you do that? In L.A.? Yeah. Like if I'm going down Sunset. I remember with an ex once, I was going down Sunset. She said something sort of sexual. And I was like, fuck this. And I just pulled, made it right on Sunset and went up a little bit. Yeah. Those big houses are all there. Yeah, that's where you get caught, though. Like, I know, but a lot those... of times there's not that many street lights. Yeah. Yeah, because people are like, whose car is that? Yeah, exactly. It's not just like, let's park outside. Like, no one should be parked outside. Yeah. It's almost you're better off on Sunset or something like that. Yeah, you like, are yeah, right here. Car. Who cares? No one would even, and if they were fucking, they'd go, oh, those guys are fucking and keep walking. I've caught people fucking in cars before. Yeah. Not a lot, but I've seen it before. Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, they're going at it. It's that funny. definitely got to stick out. Where are you from, D.C.? Yeah, Maryland. I played there a few times. 930 Club? I, I played there once finally. I saw Alanis Morissette there. Yeah, yeah. Back There was this like small period of time where she had one song, You Ought to Know. Yeah, yeah. And it was like full of rage and anger. Yeah. And I was like, I, my friends didn't, they were just all classic rock people or, yeah. or like, or like, uh, like what's the new stuff? Easy listening, new stuff, whatever it is. Yeah. Like what Star 98.7 used to be when it was Star 98.7. Exactly. Just like, who would be on those stations? Who's that guy that comes in with Jeff Ross sometimes? Uh, Your body's a wonderland. Oh, yeah. Um, John Mayer. Yeah. So they listened to either one of those two. Right. And so I was the only one listening to like alt, alt rock. And so right. I was like, this chick is cool. Yeah. And then she came out with like ironic and stuff. And I was like, I'm an asshole. The drummer in that band is, the, you know, the drummer for Foo Fighters. What? Yeah, who's always been the drummer for Foo Fighters, but he was the drummer in that band. Wow. She came before Foo Fighters, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, long, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long yeah. Time, she was yeah. high school. Yeah. yeah. But that Honestly. was, if you look at the first video, they're in the desert. Yeah. He's the drummer, and he's just fucking pounded. He's really? got long blonde hair. Yeah. Did you ever do that, play in other people's bands? I never played in anybody else's bands because I was a singer. So if you're oh, yeah. in a in somebody's band, then you're, you're pretty much band. it's your band. Yeah, yeah. I always wondered that when people have like super great musical talent and then they just play, they're like, "Well, I don't have a band that's making a shitload of money, so I play and I play, you know, yeah. for whoever's backup." Well, there's dudes that make huge livings doing that. Really? Well, they they there's like, when, like now, there's like five, five drummers in maniacs, like. Yeah, she needs a she needs a new band. That's right, and it's like you get like there's like five amazing drummers in town, and that's it. And yeah, that's it. And they use them all. Uh, you'll go and you'll go. Oh yeah, they got Brian Tishy on drums. You know whatever. And, Wait, so for their tours or just for like the for their albums? tours and their records? And then they go on tour with them too, and then they get and they yeah. then they go off tour and they play with somebody then else the guys for a while. play with somebody else. Like they'll play with Paul McCartney for a full year. And so then McCartney will take a break, let's say. Yep. And then eight months later, let's say he calls Joe Tish again and says, "Hey, can you do it?" He goes, "Oh fuck, I'm actually." Now I've already I'm already booked with so and so or what do they do? Well, sometimes what they'll do is they'll they'll book a tour and they'll be working a long time and yeah. they'll get a heads up like hey right. man Paul McCartney's going to be going out he's going to want you again and the person of the lower uh, stature knows hey I know he's you're going to go to that anybody would understand yeah. if I'm going to play with Paul exactly because the paycheck's going to be like ten times what oh, you're right. getting paid and they'll get the next great dude who's right. not working right. because it doesn't matter to them they're not a band member on the album cover and can they oh right and can they get someone for like let's say it's a six month tour with with um. Let's just say Natalie Merchant. And you're like, all right, it's fine. Yeah. And then Paul McCartney calls, and but he's like, I start in June. You're not done until July. He's like, well, someone else can fill me for the last month. Do yeah, do they'll that? do that. Okay. Because a lot of times a person will have like three drummers they've worked with. Yeah. And they'll call that guy and they'll go, we're doing this set list. And the guy will just refresh on it and fly out and start playing. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how good these pro so they dudes are. they practice a little bit. And they practice a little bit. They'll go through the shit, you know, and boom, sure, man. Sure I see good. I played with dudes. I played with drummers are the hardest, you know, because they get money gigs all the time yeah. and you'll lose them. So I played with five of the biggest drummers there are and all of them 
play different. Your band feels totally different each time. Yeah. Like, you'll get one guy, and you'll go, I love when he plays. It's like a Zeppelin thing. You'll get another guy, you'll go, I like when this guy plays because he's kind of laid back or whatever. They're oh, all right. different. They all have their own feel. They all have their own feel. Oh, that's cool. So it's not just by numbers. Like, everyone would be doing something different, Absolutely. like comedy or like anything else. That's, so your band is, it really gets a different flavor all the time. Yeah, sometimes I can hear. I used to not understand how I could tell the difference between bands, but I'm like, there's a sound, even when they're not singing. Certain yep. bands have a sound. They do. And I'm like, yeah, that's Green Day. Or that's so and so. I can just tell yep. before we open the Zeppelin. South. Yeah. You, know, you hear that sound. shit, you know what it is. Yeah. Uh, like, what's in it? Kevin Kersey was telling me about Black Sabbath drums. Yeah. He was like, he goes, I can play just about, is what Kevin said, I can play just about anything, but not the Sabbath drums. Yeah. Just because it's so weird. Like, boom, boom. Boom. But they don't, it's just yeah. like, they just they, wait. And they don't make any sense. Wants. Yeah. And that's the rhythm in that guy's mind. You know what I mean? You're going like, why? You know, like, you know, like the wizard, it's like, and they're like, what the fuck, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's where did that come from? But that's his fill. So do people fill in ever? Like when, like, can you fill in last minute or do you just have to play the notes? Like, like how they say it, if it's like a last minute thing. I remember when Elastica was playing some tour and Courtney Love was on the tour too. She was headlining Yeah. and Annie from Elastica, I think that's her name, got sick or got pregnant or something. So she had to leave. Um, and then Courtney Love's like, I'll play bass or guitar for you, whichever one it was. Right. And they use her for a couple gigs, and they're like, we can't keep doing this because she steals focus. But like, yeah. Well, if you're playing a guitar or bass, yeah, you got to play the, the the guitar. You know, you got to play the song. Oh, really? Yeah, because if you play wrong chords and shit, the person's singing over it, and they'll sound they'll be out of key and shit. Oh, so, so there's less leeway in that. That's it, yeah. There's no leeway in that. There's leeways in the solos right. when they go into a guitar solo. Fuck yeah! But the root of the song yeah. is basically the verse is these chords, the pre-chorus is these chords, and the chorus are these chords. You wouldn't want to go off that because the guy's singing and then he'd be like yeah. it sounds like you hear it it's wrong you go yeah, right. oh, what matter. the fuck's going on so wait when they do solos is just they have a beginning point and ending point and everything that's right on you, them? and you solo over like say 16 bars of uh -huh. g to d to c so the guy knows he can go anywhere on the fretboard in between g d and c yeah. and he's it's not going to be wrong and then when he's when he's ready he's like i'll call you in with a certain chord that's right and then he lands on the last chord which oh. would say b c and they start, they start up the chorus up oh i thought the drums did that keep everybody in order well the drums is the time and the tempo yeah you know what i mean and and he's keeping the time. The bass and the guitar are playing the chords that yeah. are the song. So they can play without the drums. The drums don't really play without the instruments. They yeah. do, but you wouldn't know what song he's doing. Unless it's a famous song, you know? Super. That'd be weird. Yeah. I couldn't really hear it. Just show up and the guy's just playing drums. You're like, oh, he's playing uh, Panama. You know what I mean? You can't tell that. Okay. No, no, no. there's no way. You know, unless it's a famous kind of drum beat. Yeah. Oh, man. That's cool. How long did you play for? I played for... And you made your living in that? Let me see your 25 albums. years. 25 years. Yep. Dean Del Rey, Lone Mountain Serenade, and yep. Tulane Blacktop. Tulane Blacktop was the name of my band, uh, and then Dean Del Rey record is when I went solo. Oh, okay. Why? These are kind of roots rock, kind of... Uh, uh, did a lot of shows with... Uh, played with Petty. Really? Uh, yeah, I played you with... You opened Bla for him? Yeah, I played with Black Crows. I played with... Um, uh, Wilco, I've done gigs with Lucinda Williams, uh -huh. you know, tons of her. big gigs. Uh, but my main thing was I toured about 10 months around the world with the Wallflowers. I remember uh, we that. talked about that. Yeah, I shot a documentary film. Yeah, on Jacob, and we went around the world. Really? Yeah, which was awesome. Uh, and because you hooked up with them, you were able to do that? Well, we were friends for about 15 years. Okay. And then I moved here, and it, and I, I moved here with like barely any money and I was here a year thinking something was going to happen and I was making that record, that Lone Mountain record and I, I swear I was down to about my last hundred bucks. Really? And he called me and said, hey, uh, you want to go and do three dates? Which was Montana, Missoula, Montana. Yeah. We played up there in the theater where uh, David Lynch wrote Blue Velvet. I love that movie. Unbelievable. And he lived in this theater in the uh, upstairs and wrote that. But we played M Missoula, Montana. Yes, that is an ear. Yeah. That's my favorite line from that so movie. So great. <laughs> he gives a cop an ear, and the cop just goes, yes, that's an ear. That thing's a masterpiece. Yeah. You know? But anyway, we, we did Missoula, Seattle, and Oregon, and then they asked me to keep 
keep going. They're like, good enough. We like it. Let's go. Yeah, they're like, this is great. And 10 months later. Wait, now what goes into being a good match like that? It's mostly how you are off stage, right? That's it. Yeah. It's how, it's how you, they don't, you know, as long as you're not a dickhead on stage, but as long as you can hang yeah. and you're not fucking, you know, getting loaded and fucking shit up and yeah. smashing. But you were getting loaded. I wasn't getting loaded. Back By then you were good? Yeah, I was good. Yeah. Because that was 2002. Drink, right? Oh, that's wow. Yeah. 2002. Uh, I quit drinking in 92. In 92? Yeah. Yeah. But I still smoked uh, weed. And when did that stop? I stopped smoking weed a couple years, uh, about a year before I decided to do comedy. Because my man, well, I was still. It's a good idea because there's, there's no successful pothead comedians. No, not because of that. I, I couldn't remember the shit. You know what I'm experiencing lately? I'm my. My short-term memory is shot. People say that's a myth. It's like, I don't see how you no, can no, say that. No, no, it's I can't not. Shit. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, but no fucking way. Nope. But my long-term memory has come back with a vengeance now. Oh. I can remember people's names from sitcoms it's fucking 20 years ago. That's great. Yeah. Because that's the shit you want to remember anyway. They're better for references. And yeah, fun. exactly. Like, yeah. sometimes people go, I mean, they go, you remember that, right? And it's like 10 years ago. And I go, no. Easy. Yeah, like not at all. Not at all. Like, I've never heard that. You're like, I can show you pictures of you reading this book. Yeah. There's like, like no. five things I remember. Like, okay, I was on the road with the wallflowers. Yeah. Then I uh, I moved over to Silver Lake, you know? Yeah. But the shit in between, no. I remember that. Asked my mom about that once. But I think I was reading like reading like a separate piece or something like that. Some, some book that you're supposed to read in like, you know, sixth grade. Yeah. And uh, I asked her, I was like, did you read this? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, okay, so then well, at the end of this, when, when he's asking this character this, like, what does he mean by that? And she goes, oh, I don't remember that. And I was like, what do you mean you don't remember? Yeah. Did you read it or not? <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't, my sixth grade brain couldn't figure out someone could forget a book. That's right. I mean, this uh, like comic over there was talking to me about Bukowski, right? Yeah. I've read all the Bukowskis. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. You oh, know, really? I, and I went through this phase where I was so I hooked on Bukowski. Bukowski you know, in the 90s, after Barfly, I was I like, was calling Bukowski for a while until I just saw an interview with him, and he keeps saying Bukowski. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe I got to change how I say it. Yeah. I, I mean, you know. Um, but I don't remember. The, so the guy's talking to me about it. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, what about this part? When that? And I go, I, I don't remember him. Yeah. And he goes, you don't remember him? And I'm like, dude, I read them all, but that was in the 90s. Yeah, that's why I don't you, remember him. That's why you got to go back and read shit again. Or, that's huh? right. Yeah, and that's why books are great. You just grab I it just again. I just read um, uh, Catcher in the Rye. Oh, yeah. the first time since fourth grade. And, and I remember it being right? funny because they talked about somebody farting or something like that. And it was like, this was hilarious. But then it was like, oh, it's so much deeper. It's great. Yeah. It's yeah. sad. It's also like, here's what I noticed this time. Like, everything he accuses someone else of doing, like he'd be like, you know how fucking so-and-so He's that type of guy who just come in and not have a point. He'll just come in and walk around your room and just annoy you. You could you could look away from him, but he'll just annoy you. Just by he won't ever leave. Take a hint. And within like three pages of whenever he like shits on somebody, he does nearly the same thing. Yeah. In, in another instance. And see, you love the book now, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's great. I hate all books they made me read in school. Really? But now I love them. You they never I mean? made me read Catcher in the Rye. I looked all through college of like I want to take this in a course. Yeah. And then I can never find one. I hated school, high school. Did you go to college? Yeah, University of Maryland. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't go to. I, I mean, I played music. I was on the dean's list. Oh shit! I was playing music in high school. So you so, said fuck it and took off. I was yeah. I was I, I was just I was done with it. You know. Yeah. It was weird because I would be out like uh, not a rock star, but yeah. you're playing in a club that's like 800 people packed, wow. and the next day you're at school like fuck this. Oh yeah. You know, I remember when Dominique Dawes, she was from Silver Spring, Maryland, and she won a gold medal in the Olympics. Yeah. And she was 15 or whatever. And there's a bunch of comics bits about it. I think Rogan had a good bit about it once or something. Same shit, but it's always like, it's tough to go to high school after that. <laughs> I won an Olympic gold medal. <laughs> that's it. You want me to worry about trigonometry? Yeah, and it's... Eat my asshole. You, and especially when you're playing music, you're starting to see things happen, what and you're you? going like... Oh, like people are... You're playing bigger and bigger gigs. Yeah, 800 people. Yeah, and then, and then like your friends are like getting record deals, and all of a sudden, oh, really? you know, my buddy's driving a Corvette, and he's like 18, and you're going, wow. fuck, you guy's got a Corvette? Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking about... My family had my mom. I live with my mom. We had no fucking money. Oh, you know, really? we were on welfare in the seventies. So uh, college wasn't even an option. No fucking way. And also, I just I had bad ADD, which mm -hmm. I I didn't know at the time. But I just I couldn't stand being in the classroom. I was like, get me out. I had the good kind of ADD. That's why I didn't do crime either because I knew I I went to jail a couple times for some shit. For what? 
Uh, one of them was just a drunk driving. Big deal, you know? Oh, then, yeah. But when you're in there, you're going, I got to get the fuck out of here. Really? Yeah, man. I, I can't stand being in locked somewhere up. locked up. Yeah. It's tough when you take away your freedom. Oh, man. And you know what? They can do it and say you did something and you got there. You can't get out. I remember the best was this guy. Uh, we saw at the Hyatt, you know, the, the, it's not the Hyatt anymore. It's called the Andaz or whatever. Oh, yeah. But there's that ramp up there to the parking lot behind it. And some car came down. It's Siren I cars coming down all the time. We didn't even notice. And like six seconds later, some guy starts running down like, he stole my car. Oh, that guy stole my car. <laughs> I think that guy randomly stole a car and just happened that the guy was coming back right at the time he was, he was oh. hot wiring a car. So he's like, this guy sees this and he's like, fuck. And he's trying to get into Sunset. So he zooms off. There's a cop at the base of the Hyatt. Yeah. Had him pulled somebody over. This guy goes, fuck that. Starts wheels into, tr- into, into Sunset yep. to leave. But this one cruising was terrible. Oh, yeah. So he goes Remember into that? Sunset and you're just not going You're anywhere. trapped. You're done. You're just not going anywhere. Yeah. So he fucking pulls off on the side, then goes up Queens Road. Oh, yeah. Cops follow him. Two more cops go up there. And then an ambulance. <laughs> About 30 minutes later, Comes goes up. Ant. Yeah. Oh, goes he up. just crashed. It's like, yeah, it's like when he's running for his freedom. Yeah. There's no, you just won't stop. Those windy hills up there. Yeah, you're down, man. Yeah. I lived at Queens Road. Really? Uh, I moved to L.A. in 2002, I think it was. When you were 36, 37. You're 36. Okay. I live in San Francisco, and I was like, okay, I, I, I've, got, I've always been in L.A., and I was like, I've got to go there and just do it. Yeah. So the first spot I move is Silver Lake. And then, like I said, I was like, it's too far. Because I was playing the Viper Room and shit, and I was coming up here. Yeah. The second spot I move is Queens Road. No one told me about the uh, heavy cruising at night there, you know? Because oh, yeah. it had gone for a while, and then it came back all of a sudden. So I could never get to my house It's like at they night. go somewhere else, and then somebody gets shot in that place, so then they'll all cruise then on Pico, and then they'll all cruise from there. They right. shot there. And they... Now it's like Hollywood Boulevard or whatever. Oh, thank God. It was horrible. It was I horrible. It. You can get around now on Sunset. It's awesome. Back then, we I used to work the cover booth at the store, yep. and I get calls all the time. It's like, dude, I'm four blocks away. I'm sorry. I'll get there soon. Like, oh, it's oh, a comic, yeah. It's like, cool, no problem. And then you call you know, six minutes later, and he's like, I'm three and a half blocks away. Yeah. And you know what? That fucked all the like the businesses, the businesses too. Yeah. You can, people go, you know, and I'm not going out to Hollywood. That yeah. traffic and shit. Oh, it and it, and it, hard. it killed Hollywood. They were trying to make this rule where they took if they took a picture of your license. Yeah, one uh, time. One time, and then one time back. Yeah, if you went in the same thing within like two hours, something like that. Yeah, ticket. Yeah, that's how they got rid of them, which was awesome. Oh, they, really? Well, they put that law, and then they just started writing everyone up, and they got the fuck out of like, there. The point is, you're not wanted here anymore. Yeah, you just get kids. out of here. So I lived up there, and I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. And then I went to Beachwood, and I've been there ever since. Really? Which I like, because yeah, it's kind of in the middle right of town. the Hollywood sign, right? Yep. So did you ever, okay. Well, first of all, were there any bad matches when you were on the road? Like when you just like, the, the, the leading band didn't like you or, or, or whatever? Um, no, but there's bad gigs, you know, a lot of bad gigs, which oh, yeah. is weird. Like you'll do... You'll be on a tour and it's really great for the big cities. Yeah. But then you'll get to somewhere like, say, uh, like Oklahoma, and you're just like, what are we doing here? And there's no one's heard your record. Right. And you're playing to like eight people and you got to play the hour. And, and you're headlining at this point. Yeah. And you got to yeah. play like the hour and a half to get the money. Uh, and now you're starting to feel like just a dick because you need that money to get to the next gig. And have you, okay, what's the difference between playing a shit gig in front of eight people or comedy or music? Which one's worse? Well, comedy shit gigs harder. It is hard. It seems like it would be. way fucking harder. Because you depend on them paying attention. That's right. With music, you just turn your back and go, hey, let's start working on new material. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, who cares? And you can really dick off with your buddies. Yeah, it'd be great if I was on stage, I could be like, "Mm, I'm just going to write for a little while. You guys can watch me write. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And that's what bands do. They they work, you know, at Soundcheck, they'll uh, work up a new riff. And then mid-show, they're like, fuck this Let's gig. Let's it. just do yeah. yeah. And a lot of songs get wrote and on the road. Because people are just drinking at the bar. They're not, That's it's right. Just, there's background noise. And sometimes you've hijacked the club. Like, you're not, you know, they what booked you? you in a club that doesn't usually have music. Oh, yeah. Or, or they have music and the people are like, ah, oh, we want to watch our football game. Or oh, yeah. Like, and then they just feel, you know, and it's loud. I feel, oh, yeah. I feel like that sometimes where I'm like, listen, club owner, just pay me. That's right. I won't go on. No, There's I, three people here. Just I'm pay dying me. to do that. Just it doesn't matter. You you contracted me, so you got to pay me the minimum, whatever you said. Yep. You, you didn't promote very well, whatever it was. But it's like I, yeah. I'm here. But we can do this. But we're gonna annoy everybody for an hour. Yeah. Are you it, gonna punish me? No one's here, man. 
Yeah, just send the employees home. Yeah. Cut your losses. Yeah. You know, it's weird, man. And then the sound like, guy's no, pissed. For you got you to play. It's like, why? Yeah. It's... I've, I've, I've wasted money before. I bought something that wasn't good. I don't try to fix it for two years. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a bad purchase. Throw it out. And with comedy, it's a nightmare. You God. want to shoot yourself. Yeah. Because there you are, there they are, and you're going. And you can't just break into bits. Yeah, it's You so know what hard. I mean? Like, hey, I ain't going nuts to buds with you, whatever. And they're just going like this, <laughs> looking at you like, huh. So then you're just talking to them. Yeah. For three hours, or, you know, for 30 talking, minutes. Just talking. And it's just like, I'm talking. I'm not even trying to be funny. Yeah, like, what are you guys doing here? Luckily, there's late nights at the store to get you ready for that shit. Yeah. I mean, that's what the store is great for because it, it gets you ready for everything. It breaks down your, uh, like, uh, presentational attitude on stage. That's right. Your, your, your show. Yeah. You know? I remember one of the best comments I got early on. I was playing DC Improv, and, and uh, this guy used to go there all the time, some, some math professor from, like, AU or GW, and uh, his daughter would come a lot, too. And she was like, hey, I was just like opening or emceeing or doing guest spots. It's one of those. But it was like, um, she was like, I really felt like you were talking to us, to all of us, to me. Like, I felt like you were talking. Like, <laughs> I don't ever see that. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's from doing six yeah. people crowds over and over and over again. Yeah, at night. And, if you and, go like, so I was at the store today. It turns out, you ever, it's like, ugh. Uh, like, it's so it. bad. And you, myself, I even feel like a piece of shit if I try yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just go like, hey, you know what? You want to stop mid and go, hey, you know what? That that didn't happen. Anyway, yeah. fuck all that. It makes you real honest. Oh, it does. Or if you say the same thing, it's like, dude, I was at the store. It was like a year ago, whatever. But have you guys ever seen this? And just like really talk to them instead of like, have you guys ever noticed? I'm yeah. at the store. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. just like, blech. I couldn't imagine you doing that anyway, because I, I watch you all the time, and it would just be like, what? Well, that's from years there. I yeah. Should do it. yeah, yeah. How long have you been I there? Started. Since I started, I started there pretty much. I did like one open mic in, in, in uh, Northern Virginia. And then you moved out here to come to the store? I waited a year or two more. I graduated college. Right. Um, but then it, as soon as I did, I was like, oh, I like that. And then, uh, yeah, I moved out, got a job at the store soon, did the open mic. Like, th I think I got three... Back then, it was a 50-50 chance. They didn't like decide who gets a spot. Right. Mike. Oh, you draw? You draw. And wow. there's 20 names. Wow. First 40 people to sign up get to draw a number. If you get a number, that's what number you go up. If you get a blank, nothing. Yeah. So I got three out of five weeks. Wow. A number. And then I got a job. I didn't have to do it anymore. You think it's better now than before? The system? Yeah. The system now is they'll, they'll pick 15 names. Right. Um, and it's usually like 10 people they think are good and coming up. Yep. And like five new people I've never seen. Yeah. The problem was when I was working the phones and people would call and they'd say, well, I'm coming in from Toronto. I'm only going to be here for four days. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's also back then you had to sign up this Sunday and you get up oh, next Sunday. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And like, so I was like, oh, you can't do that. There's nothing for you. Yeah. Unless you're going to be here for a week and a half. Yeah. And I was like, that seems stupid. Yeah. I used to think it was like, if you were really sucky, you shouldn't be allowed to come anymore. Right. Or at least say like, hey, for six months, you shouldn't come around. Right. Get better, then you come back. But then I thought... Just because what I want out of comedy is perhaps a career, yeah. that doesn't mean that's what everyone should have to want. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people... If you just enjoy it, that's artistic that's right. too. I think a lot of people hold the store to some kind of thing, rules that they think it should be. Uh -huh. and, and, and if people aren't inside their rules in their brain, yeah. it's like, fuck you. Yeah. You know, and... Give an example of that. Well, I'm just saying, like, say if a guy comes and he just sucks super yeah. bad, and then the people go, you should never come back. Yeah. Uh, and then they just don't come back. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's uh, a good thing, but I do know that it helped me. Like, I went on three months in. I came yeah. down, I signed up, I got on, Tony Hedgecliffe was hosting, and when I was done... Really? I was done. I, it was horrible. I was first. There was no one in there. I didn't know the comics had to sit in the back. Oh, yeah. And he said this. He said, uh, well, there's a guy having a midlife crisis. Oh, because you just started and you were old. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he goes, see, uh, see, people, a comedy is hard. And, uh, you know, you just can't. I don't know. He said something. And I walked down. I was like, oh, fuck. But it, it did one good thing to me, though. What? It sent me. Over the hill to the ha ha, uh, to the open Valley mics, comic, yeah. seven nights a week, yeah. And I didn't come back for a year. Really? Yeah. And I, when I came back, I was ready. Yeah, you're a million times stronger. Jordy Fox told me that once. He was like, "What are you just getting up here on Sunday?" It's like, "Yeah, every Sunday." He goes, "You got to go up other open mics." That's right. That and I did me. seven nights a week. 
Wow. And, and yeah. Every day I was at the Ha Ha at six o'clock. Oh, that same open mic. That it didn't you know why I went there? I was there. Why? Because it was all kinds of like people that weren't on this side of the hill. Yeah, we used to have this thing. We didn't have the Ha Ha. Where's every night? Where's a club? But right. We had you know a bar here, a coffee shop there, whatever it was. Sign ups are at this time. Go on at this time. Three minutes, six minutes, whatever it is. Right. Um, they had Valley Comics in the in the open mic scene, and they had uh, that's right Hollywood Comics. Yeah, I don't even know they weren't even called Hollywood Comics. It's just Valley Comics. That's and right. Comics and Valley Comics. They were the dirty ones. They yeah. were the mainstream, and everyone in the alt scene at the at the Bruco that was the, the alternative open that's mic right. of the week. They were like, "Oh, you're a Valley Comic." I'm like, "I'm not a Valley Comic. I've performed in the Valley like four times." Yeah, I'm like, yeah. just because I have a filthy mind sometimes, I guess. Yeah, well, you know. I'd like to think of myself as a dirty alternative comic. I, I think the thing about what people are missing is in the Valley is it's a hideout. What do you mean? And you can really become yourself without yeah. people looking at you and you don't feel so self-conscious. So you'll try shit that you uh, won't try yeah, that's good. anywhere else. And you can really develop uh, a something where somewhere else you do it, they go, ha, huh, in the back of the room, like, oh, that yeah. sucks. And See then you that. just abandon it. Yeah, instead of just developing how you would. That's right. And I just... Uh, I just felt better over there, you know. They're dicks. Yeah, you know what they are, dicks. But uh, I understand it. I understand it. There's also, a lot. Everybody there's... comes in like you, you're doing something shitty. Yeah. And years later, I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely was. Like, yeah. Relax. You don't yeah. have to give me an attitude about it. Yeah. yeah well, I, was, I think I a shitty. lot of people forget. I'm only in two years. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, two. I figured fucking you're way years. longer than that. Years. That's it. You know. You got made a regular at the store. How long ago did that happen? I'm not a regular at the store. What? I thought but, you get spots. No, no, I do get spots, but they haven't made me a regular yet. What do you mean? I'm a regular at the Laugh Factory. Wait, hold on. Yeah. You get spots there. I get spots. How but often? They're, uh, well, they're called like development spots now, they call them. Is it belly room? No, it's OR. Well, they put me on in the OR on Sunday, Monday, but I don't oh. get any spots on the other nights, but they put oh. me all through the club throughout the week. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Here's the weird thing, because yep. she tortured me for like years and years. Yeah. I was one of the long ones. Yep. Um, people don't notice. You like tortured. You're like, ah, I'm not a regular. Yeah. It's killing me. And other people don't even notice. Like, oh, you're a comic here, right? Yeah. They see you around and you're like, no, I'm not. I can't get regular spots. Like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Most comics, they know the comics on before them and the one right after them. Yeah. And on a 20 person lineup, they're just not even paying attention to the rest. That's right. That's right. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I think, I think also, though, if I was a regular there, yeah. everyone would hate me like big time. Why? Well, two years in, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They'd well, be, when you say everyone, you mean the, well, the employees. Well, yeah, yeah. The you young, know, young and guys. I, and I don't want that because I'm, I'm working. I, I work. You know, like last year I did 530 spots. Right. I'm working. 530. To, yeah, I'm working to be a comic. Yeah. And I and I want. I want to. If they do pass me, I want people to go. You know what? That fucking guy that deserves it. Yeah. I don't want him to be like. There's some people that have been passed, and they go, "Fuck that guy." I'm telling you, only the young employees think that. Only the super That's young right. people. Yeah. Once you go to a certain point, Miles Giovanni has never said, "Oh, that guy." Yeah, and she's like, "Oh, cool! You got something right. that sounds good for you." You're right. You know, even if he doesn't even, he won't even know if you deserve it or not. Yeah, they're just like, "Congratulations, man!" Yeah, yeah, it really helped me a lot getting to the store. They don't care. It's only those young guys who just they view it, the, getting past at the comedy store as the end all. That's right. That's right. It's weird too because and then you stop caring. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't really, I, I don't really care, but I don't. This is so hard already. I don't want people just to hate me for no reason. Yeah, that, but that'll happen. Yeah, that Certain will happen. people will get mad at you for getting something they don't have. That's right. And there's That's nothing right. you can do, really. Yeah. Get something back. Plus, I noticed this, too. It's like when Drew Carey got a sitcom, yep. he wasn't the funniest comic in the world. That's right. But should he have stopped and said, oh, before you give me that sitcom, there's this funnier comic than me. <laughs> yeah. You should get it. You're like, no, you take your fucking breaks. Yeah. Just take them. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, that's why I do the work. Yeah. Uh, because I, also, then people go, better. this, yeah, and I want to get better. All I yeah. care about now is comedy. That's and all you want I do. those people you look up to probably saying, like, oh, you're really good. Yeah, that's what you do want. Yeah. You fucking feel good, right? Louis CK told me that once when, uh, when I was in Montreal and he did, like, I did the nasty show and then he did the very last, we had, like, one extra nasty show, like, way later. Yeah. So they had, like, Jimmy Carr and Louis CK. And afterwards, I got off and he was like, "Hey, good set, man." And I was like, oh. "Yeah." <laughs> it's I mean, like that's like maybe wow. a school girl. I really appreciate. It. I try to act cool, but it was like things like that. And then Rogan taking me on the road with him was like, "Whoa, really? That's like a that's like a seal of approval from you." Yeah, absolutely. Of Ian Edwards took me on the road. Yeah, and and to me, I think he's one of the funniest guys on the planet. It's hilarious. His shit's super smart, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" What that did to me was, I can't do any bullshit here. I've got to get better. 
You know? Yeah, when I see when I go on after Ian Edwards, sometimes I'm like, "Fuck, my material is lame." What yeah, am I gonna do his right shit now? is great, huh? Yeah, it's like smart. It's smarter than mine. Yeah, um, and it's just like I just feel like I feel shitty about myself <laughs> before I go on. I, it always is fine. It's easy to follow because his right, right. is so much it's different. Mellow than mine. and yeah, so it's it's it goes well with my style. But like, I just feel bad about myself. Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> it's tough, man. Because when you if anybody feels good about themselves, I don't yeah. think they're any good. Yeah, maybe you're right. I mean, it's really weird because when I'm in this in there, I, I'm there every night, and I watch yeah. like you, then I watch yeah. Ian, yeah. I watch, uh, say, Sebastian, who I think's fucking crazy. He's a great example. Yeah. When he got passed, yeah, bad. He right. was a bad comic. Well, I saw the early footage of him, and he was kind of like a dice man kind of Jersey dude. He would start off every set like this. He would go, "The week I had today." <laughs> that sounds like dice even the yeah. week i had today it was like a joke but he was like angry he didn't know how to smile every once in a while to right. tell the crowd like relax i'm not I'm not serious here now he can he can smile he just learned how to do that smile every once in a while and that ev- makes everything easier that's Your right anger seems fake and it's okay tolerable not yeah fake. because if you're angry the whole time yeah people just like you're super angry they're out yeah or you have to super justify that anger well, you got to be a killer, yeah. like say a Jim Norton, you know, where yeah. he can just like be gross and weird and angry or whatever, yeah, and that's yeah. his character. T's crossed and eyes dotted. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Sebastian was a whole. It was like the main room would go kill, 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 death, kill, 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 kill. You know, yeah. he would just be this home. People like, what the fuck is wrong with her? What's she doing? Yeah, but they develop people there, so it's like they got better, and that's now he's right. one of the best comics in the country. Yeah, man. Uh, and it, it seemed to me it happened in like the last year. Sebastian? Where, yeah, he, he really got super confident. I saw him a year or two ago, and it was like some of the factory, and then it's on the store. It's like you don't get a chance to see everybody ever, anymore. That's right. When you're employees, you see all your other fellow employees all the time. But like after a while, you don't see anybody, and then it's like you'll see them like it'll be like a year before you get to see them again. If you don't follow them. Yeah, that's you know, right. Then it's like you go a long time. And then I saw him, and it was like, God damn it, Sebastian. Yeah. You're good as fuck. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. And also another weird thing too. in the biz is there's dudes that I don't even know who they are. Yeah. And then I've been doing that dog comedy at Laugh Factory. Yeah. Right? Oh, and I'll be cool. like, oh, who's times. this Kyle Kinane? You oh, know? Yeah. Or, or just whatever, you know? Like, you know, like he's a killer. That's yeah. Great. And you go, great, wow, great this great fucking comic. guy's funny, man. And there's yeah. dudes out there I'm starting to learn about. I started to think that for a while. Like, if I haven't heard of you, that means you must be terrible. <laughs> and then you realize, like, there's a bunch of guys coming up. There's people from New York. If you've been doing comedy four, four years in New York, five years in New York. Yeah. You've probably done nothing I've seen. Yep. But you're probably pretty good if yeah. you're one of the better people, you know? Yeah, man. And I, I see these guys, and I'm like, wow, these guys are great, you know? Yeah. It's kind of I cool. mean, some people just, uh, they're in East Hollywood, and you never see them. And then you'll do a show with them, and you'll be like, who is this guy? Yeah. Like, uh, there was that one guy I did a show with him recently. Um, who? I forget his name. Uh Pete Holmes. Oh, he's hilarious. Yeah. So You've never seen him before, huh? Never seen him. He's a New York guy for a while. So I meet him with... Uh, I, I meet him... <laughs> yeah, he's great. With, with the Doc Comedy Show. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? This guy is amazing. <laughs> yeah, like, and and I couldn't believe it, actually. <laughs> he was destroying for like 30 minutes. I was like, I never heard of this guy ever. Uh, then I went home, YouTubed everything. Like, oh, there's a ton of great shit out here. Yeah. Then I saw Mike O'Connell. He's barely around anymore at all right but he came to la from chicago or from the wisconsin area like the midwest he was one of those midwest comics came out here um i saw him at a, it was a bringer show and the yeah. bringer shows they always book like three or four regular comics yep so i was one of the regular comics i've been doing a few years yeah and this i was talking to mike favorman angry mike favorman yeah and uh mike o'connell comes up just a new guy in la looking to make friends i assumed he was a bringer comic yeah yeah and he goes so you guys comics too? <laughs> like all friendly and Midwestern hasn't been beaten yeah, down in Hollywood yet. Yeah, you're right. We're, like, we're like, yeah. And Favorman's like doubles my root, you know? Yeah. So he's like, how long have you been doing comedy? And Favorman's like, he says something. I was like, you know, a couple of years, but like ignoring him, like a couple of years and turn away. Favorman's yeah. like, 20 years. What are you, what's your problem? And just fucking walked. We just assumed he was some bringer. We don't want to talk to him. Yeah. You've done comedy three times. You're preparing for the set for nine months. Yeah. What are you going to ask me for advice? I don't know any. <laughs> yeah. Especially then. And Whatever. that's the store. Yeah. And then he goes on stage. This is at Comedy Union. Oh, Comedy Union. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't where they didn't have bigger shows back then. At the right, store. right. So, yeah, he goes on. He starts killing. And I'm like, what's going on here? And then he starts killing more. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, I'm on the floor laughing. And I was yeah. trying to hate him. Yeah, yeah. But at some point, I'm just on the floor laughing my ass off. I'm like, oh, clearly this guy is not a bringer comic. 
Yeah. He's hilarious. And he's, and just, he's super worked and out. And he's digging it on stage because yeah. he knows you guys are he back goes, there. He's look like, at those assholes that are laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> I always regret that about Michael Connell. He's so nice, too. <laughs> Comedy's weird like that. Like, I, I wasn't really prepared for how mean it is. God. Uh, I played music for 20 years, 25 yeah. years or whatever. And music can be mean, but it's not mean face to face. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, you it's, don't really have to deal with anybody else. That's right. You're just out gigging. You don't really bring anybody on. Yeah. It's not like uh, you're going on right after a dude and a dude and a dude and a dude. Yeah. You know? It's mostly with your bandmates, right? Yeah. You just play and, and it's different. I mean, there's a little competition when you're younger. But yeah. once you get like a record deal and stuff, you just you're. There's on. also no definable um, uh, w ways of telling if someone's better or worse. Like like right. if I'm getting more laughs than you or less laughs than you or le less laughs better. than yesterday. Well, no, but it's easy to be like, well, that guy gets more laughs than that guy. Right. He's funnier, at least to this crowd, than that guy. Right. With music, there's really there's no sign. What is it? How many panties you get? Like, how, what? How do you tell? Yeah, it's just none of that. It's just weird. You, you know? just play. And you hope people uh, and like music. It. You're just in your own bubble. Yeah. You're like in a submarine going around America, a tour bus. You know, and then you get off. You do, people aren't on the press going, yeah, these fucking guys. And even yeah. with music, which is really weird to me, I don't get this. One band will play a song. Yeah. <clears throat> Another band will write a song and it'll be almost exact, and they don't go, "Hey, you stole that song." They don't, you huh? song stealing motherfucker. You fucking get out of the business. They do it once in a while, but not very much at but all. No, they just or they just get quietly litigate. Yeah. They get money and they roll on. But the band continues. Yeah, they never called plagiarists. They're just like, "Fuck!" Now I got to give this, like the Verve, the Bittersweet Symphony. That's right. But that was the Stones. They turned it around and, and they, they admitted had to give it. almost all their fucking music. Oh, they admitted saying, "Yeah, we took that." Yeah, they riff. said we just turned the riff around. But meanwhile, it's just a riff. That's it. And now we got to give all these residuals to them. Yeah, for, I mean, there's no only so them, many chords on the no fucking one calls guitar. Them plagiarists. That's right. They just say, ah, uh, fuck, yeah, they got to give out that money. Yeah, so because I guess it was different enough. It was like you sold a little piece, but that's yeah. it. But there's like, like Jet. I remember that band Jet. Yeah. That song they had was Lust for Life. Ones. It was like dun 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 da dun 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 da da dun 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 da. That was Lust for Life. Yeah. Exact. I can't believe no one said what the fuck. Yeah, sometimes before a song comes, the intro before the, the before the, the heavy music starts, yeah. or whatever you go like, oh, this is this, and you're like, oh, totally different song. I thought it was that. I can't believe it, man. Yeah. I mean, I thought for sure when that song came out, I went, oh, these guys will be fried immediately. They'll be burned on the cross. No, nothing. No, but if you do comedy is different. A joke, comedy, and different. it's similar to another guy's. You're gonna get some fucking. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's why I only do stuff about me. Cause yeah, it's easier that way. It's easier that way. I mean, I don't have any Facebook Nuts jokes. Butts. What, yeah. um, what, uh, <laughs> what uh, was I going to say? Did you ever get in a fight with your bandmates? Like, no. You, who would you fight with? I you don't think you get somebody. in fights. You just get in. Uh, bands are hard. You're dealing with four or five guys. Yeah. And you always got guys that have different reasons of being in a band. You got the one guy who's just, I do it because I don't have anything. You got another uh, guy who's like, I do it for the money. Where's our money? Right. And then you get another guy who's just like, you know, he's like, a, he's out of his mind, a drug addict. Yeah. And then you got another guy who's got the vision. Yeah. Now the vision guy will be going and everything will be going great when the shit's going good. But when it's not going good, then the other three, four guys are like, hey man, why don't we try my songs or why don't we try right. these gigs? And they're so let you have power as long as stuff's going well. Right. And then when you give the power to somebody else, yeah. they're just a lazy piece of shit. And they go, well, I don't really want to do this here. This is what's happening in Egypt right now. Yeah, exactly. They didn't have a in, but guess what? The new people are shitty too. That's right. That's the same thing. Thing, man it's just, just a fucking new leaders different same if shit anything we can learn from this you don't trust an arab <laughs> i think that's the main um and that's the whole meaning of rock and roll yeah never trust an arab but you do get into that you know you what do I mean? get into it once in a while you get into um i had this one guy in a band and he would always question where the money was it was so really? weird but like, who's we getting books. paid who's with the money in it. He thought people were stealing from him? He just thought like I was making way more money or something, you know? Yeah. And he'd be like, hey, dude, here's the books. So after a while, I went, hey, you know what? You collect the money and do all the stuff. And he goes, yeah, I want to do that. And after like three weeks, he's like, you do it. Because he realized, whoa, this is a second job. Accounting work, yeah. And I wasn't getting more money, but in my eyes, I should have had like management money. 
uh, booking money because yeah. I booked all the gigs. You know, uh, we had a booking agent, but I would also book the gigs. That's what we did for. We did a tour, of Monsters of Comedy. We did a tour of the coast. Me, Tripoli, Jason right. Rouse, and Chris Neff, and um, they would always come to me at the end of the day. It's like, Ari, right, you're the you're the best with math. You're the Jewiest. Like, you tell tell us what we're good, and what we're bad. Like, do the right. accounting. Right. Um, you need that guy. But though. yeah, we also had like a booking fee. Like, if you booked a gig, you get ten percent of it. Yeah, that's like that. how it should have been with me. I w- we, we got rid of that after a little while. Well, when one guy's doing all the phone calls all yeah. day, and this is where it would get in. We all put in work, so it was like, whatever. Yeah. It's all about the same. Just it starts it. getting petty, though, when yeah. there's not money. When there's tons of money, no one's really looking. Yeah. But when there's a little bit of money, the guy's like, well, why are we paying your phone bill? Well, I call these fucking places to get the gigs. Right. Well, shouldn't you do that anyway? It's like, <laughs> yeah, why well, shouldn't you? Yeah. You know? And then they always throw shit at you like, well, you got all the contacts. How is it? Like, yeah, I have all the contacts. Yeah. I should get more for that. Yeah, exactly. I had this sweet gig once. Um, my, we used to send these, the sleepaway camp I went to. Yeah. I was, I was not on welfare like you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Jewish sleepaway camp I went to every summer. At some point, they just stopped transporting the luggage. Yeah. They said, there's too many kids going now. It's got more popular. We don't have room on the bus for luggage underneath or whatever. So find your own way. So my parents and a couple other parents, they rented a U-Haul. They got somebody who worked at a synagogue. Yeah. D- drove it up. Paid him a few bucks, whatever it was. So load it up, drive it up there. And then in between the first and second month, he would drive up the second month stuff, drive back the first month stuff. Right. And then at the end of the second month, he would just drive back the, the you know both months people or whatever. And then at some point, it was just my parents did it. Then they started letting my little sister do it. And so she started making money. Char- instead of charging $5, she charged you know, 35 which is fine. It's yeah, yeah. The UPS prices. Absolutely. she make a grip. Yeah. And then it, when she got married, she handed that off job off to me, and I fucking did it for a while. And you can make like four grand. That's awesome. Just doing that. And it would pay for me to go home. When I moved out here, I would go home three times in the summer just and to do, do that job. Yeah. And somebody, I, I paid like, I guess somebody to help me, one with the driving and two with the lifting of the trunks and, and duffel yeah. bags and stuff. And I paid somebody like 200 bucks a day. Really good money, especially back then. Yeah. Especially if you're in college, all right? 200 bucks is great. And at some point, they're like, wait, how much money are you making off this? I'm like, the whole gig is mine. I'm yeah. making a shitload more than you. Yeah, yeah, don't wanna, worry about you it. You want to not do it anymore? I can find somebody else. Or do yeah. you want the $200? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like, people just get shit in their mind like, hey, uh, I want in on this. And it's like, you understand? This is mine. Yeah. It's like if I owned yeah. uh, this Radio Shack here, yeah. you started working, and, oh, and then wanna... you go, hey, you know what? This place makes a lot of money. I want some I of it. I can import go, stuff and then just... Yeah, go open one. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's fucking weird. There's places for lease all over the city. <laughs> So you, so wait, how is normally music supposed to be split up? Assume it's big. It's one. Is it vocals? It's rhythm. What is it? How, songwriters get the money. That's how it works. It's split up in three ways. Three you get ways. Melody. Yeah. Melody, which is what the whole band makes. Melody. Melody. Uh, it, that's right. No, melody is like the the no 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 no. Then you've got the music. Melody is like uh, say like the lyrics. What the lyrics are, are the pattern oh, so of the lyrics. so when you can hear a song when they're doing the solo and you can still hear the song and That's sing along right. with it. That's right. You know, uh, like like if it went like, been a long time since I rock and rolled. It doesn't go like, been a long time since I've rock and roll. You know what I mean? There's this, it's called melody. Melody. So that's usually guitarist. That's usually the singer. The lyricist guy. The guy that writes the lyrics. He writes the melody and then there's music. That's the breakdown. So it's it's lyrics Melody, Melody and music. music, right? So if you're the lead singer, you get two thirds of it. If you were the guy that was writing it, sometimes like in Sabbath, the ba- bass player uh, yeah. wrote all the shit, or like Oasis. Yeah. That's right, the guitar player wrote the whole song. And so, so then, like, let's say in the Beatles, when the drummer, when Ringo wants to write a song, right? He's like, so for this one song or one twelfth of the album, if there's twelve songs, right? I get the big. You money. get that money on that song, like okay. Octopus's Garden. And so, wait for music. Does the lead singer get a part of the music also? No. Nope. He gets none of the music? No. Nope. That's why... What if he plays guitar and sings? Let me, t- let me tell you something. Okay. Uh, you've got um, Roger Daltrey. Yeah. Didn't write anything in The Who. Yeah. He's the singer. That's it. So he gets lyrics. He doesn't get lyrics because he didn't write, he didn't the, write lyrics. the lyrics. Pete Townsend said, here's what you sing, and this is how it goes. Get out there. And so what did he make? Nothing. He just make album, what they call mechanics, album sales. Uh, you split that up, however. You split album sales? You split way? album sales. Wait, and- 
But that's what you that's the money from the songs. Right, but they got a thing called the mechanic. Each time a record sells, it's called a mechanic. It's another way to make money. It's so fucked up. So it's up. like one dollar on the goes towards mechanics. One dollar on the sale. Like, 10 cents oh you know what i mean so he gets a portion of that. that's right but then the guys get big money from touring and they split that they split touring they money. split touring everyone makes the same money and merchandise if if they're fair if it's a band that started like kings of leon yeah four guys in the band their family they'll split everything they're all the same thing now if it's um paul mccartney yeah. and he's out with wings he's not going to give the wings guys right. he's, like, so well, he's going to give them salaries Oh, really? They make salaries, but they make big money. Big salaries. Big salaries. What if it's like uh, what if it's like a Weezer where... where, where um, that least, guy gets all the money. I heard he did this, and they were all but like, okay with it. But he probably split it all. There was, a, there was a three-way split. He had it in a fourth thing yeah, just so he could get more percentage. And they were like, what? Not like... It was like harmonies or something. Right, I don't he know. He had something like that in And they were like, what? And they was like, you know what? It could be producer we're credit. We're making hand over fist. Let's just suck it up. Yeah. I mean, he could get producer credit. Really? Producers, like... Uh, I mean, Rick Rubin lives right up the street here. I and, almost threw him out of the comedy store once. Yeah, one block away here. He lives from you. Really? Yeah, right, right up this fucking street here. Oh, wow. And let me tell you something about that guy. Producers make more money than the band. Right. If the record sells. Because they get what they call points on the record. So the band, let's say, gets like one point on their record. Yeah, out of 100? Out of, I think it's 10 points is how they yeah. work at, you know, a record. Um, they'll get like one point when you're a new shit band. Yeah. The producer, say Rick Rubin does it. This Rick Rubin was before anybody ever did this when I get five points. And they're like, why? Producers like, because before you're gonna be a got hit if one, you two, or three. So and, he just said, fuck it. Yeah, You'll I guess I take five. No one ever did that. And at first, people are like, no way. And they're like, well, let's just pay him. Let's just pay him. And they go, hey, well, you want to sell 10 million records or you want to sell none? I want to sell 80. That's right. Yeah. And another thing with Ruben is he doesn't just, you can't just say, we'll give you five, do our record. He'll go, I don't like your band. I'm not doing your record. So he's got to even. You can't just hire Ruben. Right. He's got to be into it, you know? Yeah. When you do quality enough stuff, there's this commercial director, Joe Picca. Yeah. And he pissed somebody off at like some high level, like. Uh, movie plays so he can't ever do movies he did he did um he did uh space jam because, oh yeah because because shack because was that shack it was it was jordan oh jordan Shaq might have been in it he might have right. been one of the young guys in it but right. like uh only because he did so many jordan commercials that jordan's like i'll do it but i want that guy working with me right but um he's so good like all the stuff all the ibm stuff is his all the pepsi stuff for a long time was his right the great commercials are all his and um and uh and he started using like regular people in commercials he just like reinvented it you know um but he was like everybody else like the client let's say you're doing a suzuki commercial yep suzuki people get to be there I'm like Ooh, we don't like this you gotta no change that don't hire him because that we don't like the look of this person right. with him he's like get the fuck off my set <laughs> yeah and he's the only one that people are like okay because it, he just he's like i will make you very successful i will make this commercial work for you you dream it he that, rewrites you know? it all the time that's like CK with his show. He goes, I'll do the show, but yeah, you can't say nothing. You just get the fuck away. Yep. And then you look if it starts you to go bad for a while, then you can start saying that and I'll That's have to right. do it. But until then, while I still have the power of people are going to hire me, then these are the rules. You yep. want it? And usually those people make great shit anyway. Yeah. That's you know why they're I mean? like that because That's they're making right. great shit. It's like a Fincher. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He just goes, hey, I'm making my own movies. I don't care if you say no or, or what. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. What was the tale like on the road? Uh, it, it's good, you know. It's that. Here's the thing. Because you were like a roper. You weren't. You weren't like a looper. You weren't like a. You weren't like a. I don't know. I wasn't. You a huge open band. for like That's humongous right. bands, or you do like small gigs yourself. That's right. right. Okay. Yeah. You were like a working musician. Right. Right. I got a uh, and I got a lot of girls. The thing about rock and roll is everyone gets girls. That's really? involved. The roadies, the band guys, the bus driver, How? the. Cr- it, it's it, it, the thing is, the girls are caught up in the I don't know what it is really. They just so excited to be around the atmosphere, yeah. especially an atmosphere on a tour bus. The music's turned up. You're be- parked behind the club. There's it's like, some it's drugs like sleepaway going camp. down. It's like it's, it's like yeah, it's a pirate Vegas ship. weekend. The beach or something. Yeah. Just like this isn't normal. That's right. They think I'm on the bus. Okay, cool. Blah, and then they're like off. Like that was crazy. Yeah. You know, and it's really wild. And it's it, it's and what's really weird is you don't even ask for sex. 
What do you mean? They're just there. So yeah. you, do you, even if you have no game, it'll just happen? Yeah, it just happens. Like, explain that. Like, say they... They they have a back lounge on the buses. Yeah, which, I've been in one of those. Yeah, so not I wasn't, I wasn't fucking any of the. So usually stars. you could just be like, oh hey, you want to check out the back lounge? Sure. And the girls like yeah, and you go back there, and they just know it's on. That used to be the deal. The comedy stores like you want to tour the place. <laughs> yeah. Once you walked in the back of the main room when it's dark in there, if they're not like oh it's dark here, yeah. If they don't turn around, they're like you know why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> I never got a single girl like that, though. I never could pull one. I hear about it. You know yeah. what I mean? That back where everybody smokes pot now, yeah. that back room, yeah. that used to be the fuck room. Yeah. You know, no one's fucking out in there now. Isn't that Too weird? Public. Everyone goes there to do smoke pot. That's right. And then goes further in to do their coke. Yeah. I, you know what's really weird is I don't get any chicks from comedy, which I thought I've I would. I've gotten a very few. Yeah, isn't that weird? Like People ask me that a lot. Like, oh, you get laid all the time. It's like, you still got to work it. There's, it really there's no, is like, weird. There's no like, I want to suck your dick. Yeah, it it's doesn't... not like rock. And I thought it would be like, I'm, I'm doing these sold out shows. Yeah. And you get off and you're talking to the chick in front of the factory or the store. Yeah. And you go, so, hey, you... Uh, you want to cruise by, or maybe get something to eat or whatever. And they go, you are really funny. Thank you. And they yeah. just, they're, they're like, They're out on Ooh. dates. They're, all, yeah. they're with people. Like music, that's not really a date situation. I mean, it can be, but it's like, yeah. let's just it, go watch music. And the chicks, if they're around, you just, you know, you know what I mean? They're sluttier girls that the, go to music Yeah, the and they're, they're into it. And, and Yeah, that's a part, that's the, kind of who they are. Yeah, right. They like it, Rock man. Rock sluts. It's like almost famous. I always tell people. It's the realest film I've ever seen about music. About that? Yeah. Not one time in the film did they go off and Were you I like, went. No way. Yeah. Really? Never. And it was the I just watched Warrior, that MMA movie, that, right, that right. UFC movie, and there was a couple times I was like, come on. Yeah. There's no way that guy would get this biggest fight in the world. Yeah. He's a right. 50 50 fighter. Right. He's got, there's a million fighters ahead of him that would be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, I think because uh, of what's his name, who did Almost Famous. Um, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I'm drawing a blank, but he, you know, he wrote for Rolling long, Stone. Long term memory, you know what it's I mean? Shot I, I told you. Um, but yeah, he, he wrote, wrote for, yeah, he wrote for Rolling Stone, and he was there, and he knows what's real, and oh, and, right. he and he did it real. It real. Sometimes you know? they just take leaps, though. Even if it, even if it is real, and somebody who was in that world, whatever the world is, pool, uh, yeah. sock, whatever, they still like take little leaps. I'm like, man, we'll do this. Yeah. I think with rock, though, you don't need to do that because it's so, so radical already that you don't need to up The it. idea of a bus. Yeah. I was hanging out with Jeff Ross on, on, uh, on, uh, in Montreal, and yep. uh, he randomly met the lead singer of um, – he did my storyteller show there. He, yeah. he closed it. I did four nights of, of, of fuck stories. Yeah, which is awesome. Those, the storyteller shows oh, are just great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, they're great. Next one's either – February 28th or March 27th, depending on when this comes out. But, I, lo- um, I love that idea because there's no real pressure to there's be no real funny. Pressure. That's why I charge, try to charge as little as possible, yeah. just $5 or something nominal so that you don't take it for granted, but yep. like no pressure on anybody. That's right. Because like, I got great rock stories, you know? Okay. And they're great to tell, but they're better to tell in a big audience because people always want you to tell it over and over and over, and it yeah. sucks yeah. after a while. And in, 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 in the environment where they're like looking for stories, That's right. it goes better. So cool. When you take that stuff and try to bring it to the comedy stage yeah. it needs some tweaking you can I, do it but it needs some tweaking yeah to like because be that's bit. why i like watching you a lot like the story about uh climbing the bridge uh-huh. I, I really respect that because it's a funny ass story and it's a story yeah. but you're getting laughs the whole way and i watch it every time because i've got stories and i don't know how to do them yet and once i think i can figure it a out a lot of it's um metaphor thrown in a metaphor yeah let's say um you went over to somebody's house and there was a bunch of bags piled up that's the fact yeah, but it's it's a bunch of bags piled up like it was a little fucking I don't know Taj Mahal out of out of paper. Right, you know those are the things that get the laugh. But it says the same thing. Yeah, you're tweaking to get the laugh. Yeah, how am I going to describe this right. this part of the situation? Yeah, yeah, like when you say those help it's a look. valve. Yeah, and, and then you do that. That to me is the funniest part of the joke. You okay. go, I don't know why this when I move the leg up here, it's a valve that opens my ass, <laughs> yeah. but it is, and that kills me on it. You know, and there's parts too where you got to figure out like. Like for that one too, it was like, do I start off? Do I surprise them with it, or I just figure out it works better if I just write off I'm like I shit my pants? Yeah, yeah, that's how you got to do it. And then it's then we go through the whole thing, and then they sort of forgotten. That's it's right. Kind of like you ever see um, what's a De Niro movie where he blows up in the beginning? 
Casino. Oh, yeah, Casino. And then they tell you the story. That's yeah. right. And clearly, it's him talking. It's him yeah. doing the, the play-by-play, play, whatever, the, the, uh, whatever that's yeah, called. Yeah, the, the commentary. Yeah, so you know he didn't die. Right. He's telling you the story. Yep. So, but he's going to blow up at some point. All through, you're like, I know it's going to lead to him blowing up in a car. Yep. It's going to. Exactly, and that's what's great. Cause it's, then, so it's yeah, okay, yeah. You go, I, know why I that shit my better. pants, and then you go, oh, okay, cool. So what? And then you tell me how. Yeah. And then I mean, I try to bunch of times not telling you at the beginning and just never. Yeah. Different ones. You get a of Stories. What I find too are hard is you have nine or ten friends yeah. that it affected them big time. Uh-huh. Like whenever my friends come, they go, man, you're great. But how come you don't do those stories? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, dude, those affect you yeah. because they were in your life. A lot of it too. It's like. And then Karen came in. You know how Karen is. Yeah, yeah. And people in the crowd are like, no, I no, don't know who don't. Karen is. Exactly. I don't know how she is. Exactly. And people in the, and your friends are like, oh, yeah, 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 go on. Yeah. They just know. Right, exactly. But mine are a lot of them with famous people. Yeah. So then they're like, tell that Prince story. You yeah. know, and then I, I tell it. Or, or I got a Tell an the axle. Prince story. What's the Prince story? Well, it's it's long, though. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, really? And I haven't told it in a while, so I would have to re- remember yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So that's why it's sometimes I'll tell it and then people go, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, and it wasn't that funny. That's, no well, that's cause I just, I, I don't remember it like you do, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But tour bus is back to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're awesome. They're amazing. Like submarines. Uh, you just go to the back, you smoke some drugs or whatever. Yep. Now when you're on tour. Yeah. Is it, this is what I realized later. I figured they just have drugs, all those people, but then it's like, they're not around their regular drug dealer That's or right. their pot dispensary or That's whatever right. it is. So then it's like they have to come up with it on this road. Yeah. They don't, nobody takes four months worth of drugs with them. Yeah, they don't. They don't. So then it's like they rely on people to be like, hey, yep. here's a bag of weed. It's usually the door. People at clubs. They'll hook you up? Yeah, they'll come back. You'll be like, oh, yo, uh, we're looking for some. Yeah, I got the guy. He'll make the call and the guy will be there. The guy will be, yeah. The guy will be there. Because they know at this point. That's why the guy I, gets when I a kickback. Big back. venues sometimes in Canada or whatever. When it's like giant, like it's like theaters, and they're used to like rock. You can just ask them. That's right. They do every night. Somebody comes in, and every other night, let's say somebody wants drugs. Yep. So they they know it's like, how are you doing? You need anything while you're here? That just means that's right. We're asking you. There's a great scene in Cocksucker Blues. You ever seen it? That's no, the, I haven't. Cocksucker is Blues is the Rolling Stones movie. They hire this amazing French director to do a documentary on the Exile and Main Street tour. Nice. They go out. He shoots the whole movie. When he's done, he hands it to them. They go, this is amazing. It'll never come out. Because he basically documents Keith Richards. Cocksu- fuck, what's it called? Cocksucker Blues. Let me see if I can steal this right now. It's probably one of the best rock movies ever made. One of the best rock movies ever made? Yep. And it didn't come out because it's so gangster. And how'd you see it? Well, what, uh, it's a famous film, so you could get bootleg copies that were always kind of shitty because the guy would leak it, the guy that made it, you know? Yeah. But you always heard about it for years, like, oh, I heard the band fucks these girls on, that, on their jet, yeah, and they yeah. do. Yeah. The crew's like high-fiving fucking girls on a jet, but there's a scene where Keith is dope sick, and they're in New Orleans. Dope sick? Yeah, he's a heroin. And he, I always and, thought dope was pot. It's, it's not. It's no, heroin. it's heroin, yeah. I did not and he's totally... Language sick and they don't know where to get any dope and this guy shows up and goes i got a guy rooster's gonna come yeah and it's this white cajun guy who, who's like speaking the most insane like uh, you gotta Cock-sucker see it. blues what's yeah. it called cocksucker blues yeah and so he shows up and they're filming he gets in the hotel and he's like here man I got this shit right here. What? And he's a white guy, but he's like Creole. Those Creole guys. Right. I love that And accent. he's swamp and he's dirty. And they go, well, we got the money coming. He's all, you don't motherfucker. You don't fuck with me. Man. I don't give a fuck. You more of a rolling stone, stone rolling motherfucker. I'll kill you give, right like, now. Wow. And he's like, he I'm fucking. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And he's he, like, and you're he not goes crazy. My- and you're going, whoa, this guy. And he goes, you don't fuck get no shit. And Keith's over in the corner all sick. Like, Argh. he's like, I'll kill you. Oh, and, and then I guess they mellow out and they give him the money and then Keith gets better. But this Gee, guy that's goes. That's not a good nego- So I'll that's an old school movie. 70s find some street dealer comes into your hotel at the Four Seasons. I got it. Yeah, dude. It's a must see. I'm it right now. Must see. Really? Yeah. Because it's, it's really, style. really bizarre. Really? Yep. And it covers the best era of the Stones ever. It covers what's the, the rest, best right? tour. Uh, it's basically the seventh. Liz 70s. Fair, her first album was a was a was a 
it's called Exile on Guyville, and it was. She said, "I never listened to Exile on, on Main Street." Awesome. She said it was a direct um, response to that. Wow, Exiles to me is one of the best records ever made because it has a lot to do with um, like just rock and roll at the peak. Yeah, but really fucking dark. Really, and it was a lot of it was uh, it was it was made all over, but a lot of it was mixed here in L.A. and they lived right up the street here in the hills. And they, they were fucking loaded. And wow. it's the creativity of it. They made it in France, really, in this basement. They're That's on good films. They're on tax, tax yeah, really. exile. That's why they call it exile on Main what Street. What do you mean tax exile? They made so much money in, in London, and they were taking all their money, so they became no citizens and went into exile. What, so what do you, you mean? Wait, they made taxes. money in London. What do you mean? Well, you know, London back then, remember they'd take like half your money? No, I don't remember, but yeah. Yeah, back in the day, they'd take half your money. And, and they so, said, fuck it. We're so taking- they were making, you know, millions of dollars, and they go, no, we're going into tax exile, and we're going to so go. That means they, they're, they're not citizens of any country? That's right. And so why, they- why can't they just be citizens of America? This is before then. It wasn't, you couldn't just be citizens of America instantly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they went into tax exile and went to the uh, south of France. Yeah. Made this record in this fucking beautiful old South French mansion and then mixed it here in L.A. But it's got this crazy just drug vibe. Wow. And it's it's incredible, man. I mean, to me, it's a piece of rock and roll that will never be uh, beat, you know. Wow. I got to see that. I'm and I don't even know it. how they made that record because they're, they're a good band, but they're not that good. Really? I mean, they're great. I love them, but... That thing is a masterpiece. Sometimes you just, if you, just question of like buckling down at the right exact time. Yep. And having the right, I remember hearing this thing, thing on uh, NPR about, about, um, about Pink Floyd. And they were talking to one of them about, about the wall. Yep. Uh, and if he knew um, that he had something special there, uh, like if he knew how big it was going to be, he goes, oh yeah, no, I, I wrote it. I knew it was great when I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. It was just Roger like, Waters. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I no, mean, he was just like aghast by that like, idea. That, what do you mean? Of course. I knew what I was writing. It was amazing. That's that's weird to me. It's like, wow. A lot of musicians are insecure. I mean, yeah. you know, when you're making a record, you're in there and you record it and you you hear it over and over so and over So you're like, is this month. good? And yeah. And you, that's what you get into. You yeah. go, is this any good? Yeah. Sometimes you need to step away for about a week or so and they come in and you go, this is good. We're on the yeah, right mark. Scripts Let's do that go. sometimes. Yeah, exactly. But, you know. I'll sometimes hear an old, old bit of mine on audio or something and I'll start laughing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess it was funny. I forgot how it goes. Yeah. And then it makes me laugh. Like, it's my taste in comedy, I guess. Yeah. You got to you gotta step away from it, you know? Yeah. You got to step away. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Okay, so I have more questions. Okay, so then, okay, hold on, sorry. <laughs> so the back of the bus, you just take a girl, you're yeah. back of the bus, and you're just like, let's just do this. Well, you kind of go back for a minute. You're kind of talking for a minute, and if if she doesn't kind of like make a move or, or she'll whatever, sit like close to you. Yeah, yeah, and like maybe maybe you kiss her or something, and she's down. Or or if you go to kiss and she's not, you go. So this is the back of the bus, huh? Cool, and then you just walk you back just out. Leave. That's right. Yeah. You just know instantly in one second. It's like you said with the dark. Ooh, this is dark and creepy back here. Yeah. You know. And then Paul you just, used to have a move. I don't know if he still does it or not. Yeah. What is it? When he's in the green room and a girl will go back to the green room to say hi after the show. Sometimes people come back and say hi. And he would pretty much instruct people. Like if somebody hot comes, like tell them where I am. Yeah. Um, he just pulls his dick out. Wow. Just pull it out. Wow. And his theory was, was this. Because one... If a girl's there to do it, let's just get to it. Yeah. So it's like, all right, let's start sucking it, whatever. Wow. And if, if a girl's definitely not going to do it, yep. this will scare her away, and I won't waste four hours trying to like wear her down. <laughs> She'll be like, oh, are you kidding me? And she'll just take off. Yeah. He's like, once in a while, he thinks he might have scared away somebody that would have done something, but it was just too overt. Yeah. And I, but yeah. he goes, if you're making a move to go back privately to the green room, yep. that's that's what you're looking for. So let's just, let's just give yeah. it to you. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, <laughs> can you can really tell in like one minute. Yeah. And there's other band guys ready to use the back lounge. So you don't want to be back there uh, with conversation talking. and yeah. shit. Yeah. So you just go back. It's the arm around it. You go, this is pretty cool, huh? And they go, yeah. And then you kiss them. And either they go like, oh, huh. <laughs> or they go, oh, it's on. You know what I mean? Do and you ever you- get someone who's so overt, they just go like, just like after standing, let's say you're standing outside the bus, smoking yeah. pot or something. Do you ever just have someone come up to you and just like, Right up to you, just rub your dick. I'm like, so what are you doing right now? 
I've had like, chick- oh, I've, I've had chicks just say like, "Are you gonna take me on the bus?" Really? Yeah, just straight wow. up. Like that's so when, much easier. Yeah, when you're outside. Yeah. Now, now comedy. I'm I'm kidding you. Comedy. I'm not kidding, man. That, it, it is impossible. I can't believe it. Actually, like I thought for sure. Like, okay, I'm gonna you know the funny guys get laid. Wow. But the you know what the problem is? What? The women on funny guys they want to marry those guys. Oh. You know what I mean? Like he's funny and I really like him. He's down to earth. We'll so they home. don't put out. Maybe. I or mean, like less, less so. Yeah, right, less. less slutty. I but, remember this girl in Dallas once where it was like, she was out, her brothers were there or something like that. And I normally have a rule, like, if you're with people, I'm not going. If you're with guys, I'm oh, not no, going Oh, no, no, see you later. Because that guy's your boyfriend, you're just not telling me. Oh, I got a good story for you. Okay. I was at the Hard Rock, playing the Hard Rock. In Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. And it was sold out. I got it's off stage. It's gotten worse by it, though, right now. Uh, uh, just right Oh, no, maybe the punk. No, I think the hard rock. I forget which one. Go I ahead. get off stage, and I'm uh, usually I always did the same thing. When I got off, I would sign the CDs because you could sell them really quick. Yeah. Because they'd go, hey, will you sign it? You go, yep. And you just start selling CDs, so you man. you sign them ahead of time? Just, yeah, I just sign them right there in front of them yeah. and just start rolling up the money. A chick comes up to me, and she's like, you were great. Oh, man. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. So I go, hey, you want to go backstage? She goes, yeah. So okay. we go backstage. I have my own dressing room. It's huge. Yeah. And, and we, we go for it, right? Yeah. And, and this chick is- Hey, you want to go backstage? It's pretty much saying, hey, you want to yeah, go around? Yeah, exactly. She's by herself. She goes, my friends are over there, but yeah, cool. So we go back there and we have- and then, Hold on. Let's not skip any steps. Yeah. What do you mean we just go for it? Like- we're back there and we're talking for like one minute. And we start making out. So and immediately she, it was just like, okay, yeah. Clearly and then it's see. on. And I'm like, whoa, this girl's like, and she's crazy horny, like just whoa. And I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, like like a chick that hadn't been laid in years. <laughs> and I go, oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm staying in that hotel and I go, hey, here's my room number. Just come up after the show. I'll be up there. She goes, oh yeah, I can't wait. So also I give her my phone number because I go, if I'm not in my room, just text me. Yeah. About three days later goes by. I never hear from her again. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Back up. Yeah. So I okay, give her so my you, phone you number. Fucked in the back. The yeah, we fuck in the backstage. Oh, that's another crazy thing. It's like, which type of girl yep. is just going to fuck in, the, in like a weird semi-public place like it's that? It's weird. On your first try. That's right. You just meet them. Yeah. That's always my thing. Is like, I think it was one way just once ever at the store that I think I, we were talking late at night in the parking lot and it was like everyone was gone. Yeah. It's like 3 a.m. She was sitting in the trunk of my car, and I was right standing next to her, like in between her legs, not were open, but like right there. Yeah. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I think she wants me to do something here. <laughs> but the fucking hotel, all has windows looking out. It's yeah. Just, are you? It's no way. Yeah. Because if I'm wrong, she'd be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, You're just yeah. gonna fuck me right here on the parking lot." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so afraid of like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, that was bad. Yeah. That I just don't go for it. Well, I always let them kind of go for it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, I'll talk to them, and then I'll say something like, you want to make out? Like, in a joking way? Like, hey, you want to make out? And if yeah. they go, yeah, then it's cool. Or they go, you silly guy. And they go, cool, <laughs> anyway. So this backstage, hey, let's go watch the show. So anyway, she, she basically is like like nympho, goes crazy on me, right? And so then you give her, you tell your... your... I go, here's my room number. Uh, if I'm not in there, just text me. Okay. She goes, okay, yeah, for sure. Oh, great, you know? And she's really hot. Because you wanted to have sex again before you I left. I did, big time. Not yeah. just in the dressing room. Because in the dressing room, you're always kind of like, what was that? You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's can't just kind of weird. It. Yeah, I would so, that. Yeah. So like three days goes by, and we're on the highway. And we're, I remember it like so well. We were watching uh, those Tenacious D videos. Yeah. You, you look a little like that guy. Kyle I'd, I'd never seen him before. And I was watching. We were just in the back, me and, me and my buddy and... and I get a call. And I go, hey, what's this? Hello? And I swear, this guy's all, who the fuck is this? And I'm all, uh, who's this? He goes, I found your fucking number. Home's in my girl's phone. Oh. And I go, uh, oh. I, I don't know who you are, but I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, you all fucking kill you, Holmes. Wait, how does he get just when I found your number? Do he's fucked my girl? No, he didn't say that. Who the? He said, who the fuck yeah. is this? I found your number in my girl's phone. And I go, hey, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. You got the wrong number. He's all, I don't fucking have the wrong number, Holmes. I fucking know. Who are you? It's like, you don't know who I am, yep. and there's no way you can find me. So I hang up on him. I'm like, mute. fuck, crazy cholo. Uh -huh. I mean, it was a full-blown cholo, right? Except five she knew your room number. Yeah, right. Uh -huh, but yeah. five minutes later, he calls again. 
Yeah. So this time I go, fuck this guy. Yeah. So I said, hey, dude, if my number is in your lady's phone, I don't sleep with married chicks or chicks with boyfriends or fuck around with them. So if it's in there, she lied to me and said she didn't have a boyfriend. So you go deal with your lady. Yeah. And I hung up and I never heard again. But it was crazy, wow. though. You know what I mean? Like, just to hear that, like, whoa. And so to uh, me, it was the girl that went to Vegas, <sighs> you know, with her three friends. They fucked a bunch of dudes or whatever they did. Yeah. And then she went home and forgot to delete her phone thing. And then he's jealous, weirdo, yeah. went through and went, you meet any dudes in Vegas? And went through and saw my number and went, what's Text this? And called. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's weird, too. Sometimes girls, the, the, the mention, whenever a girl mentions she has a boyfriend, I'm like, oh, that's it. I, yeah. I pull my brain away. And then I, when I think about it later, I'm like, uh, every girl I've ever known has cheated. Yeah. Like, it's, at some point. So all it's like, girls cheat. Yeah. It's weird. So then it's like, why would I think they wouldn't? Why would I think just because they have their boyfriend? That doesn't matter. Yeah. What I don't see, I don't like drama. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not into fucking girls with dudes and the dude. That's right. The dude is there. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. Yeah. Even if that guy's your friend. I don't care. It's going to be too tough to separate you. I don't want to deal with yeah, that. Yeah, it's too much work. And the dude, and you know what? There's tons of girls there uh, yeah. lined up. I don't need to deal with a girl with a, a, boy, a husband or a boyfriend. I got six over here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not into that. Yeah, it's too much work. And, 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 and then you'll get trouble. a girl. If you sleep with a chick that's got a dude... Next thing you know, they're emailing you going, I'm leaving my man. I really like you. You showed me life oh, or you're something. Like, you're like, whoa. It's not like that. So I'm not in on that, man. I just, if they got a dude, I'm out. Yeah, this girl in Dallas, though, she was like, uh, come drink with us. And if she was hot enough, I was like, all right. And then I went back to the hotel room, but she was like, where are you? Come on, I'll get you. I'm like, fuck, all right, fine. I was like, against my better judgment, I'll go. Then I went to drink one drink with her and her brothers or her friends. Um, and then that was just one drink. And then she's like, let's go, but you want to smoke pot back in my place? I'm like, fuck yeah. This pot and the place, you know? Right. And I'm like, I just got I got to leave tomorrow at 7 a.m. So I gotta, you got to drive me back here. She's like, okay. And then we're smoking pot and the brothers, they're all there too. And they leave. And I hear them talking right outside the door. Like we're on the couch like here and they go right at the door like right there. Yeah. And they're talking right outside the door. Yeah. And they're like, so you're going to fuck this guy? And she goes, yeah, I don't know. I think so. Whatever. And I was like, oh, oh, cool. We're going to fuck. <laughs> and it became so much easier for me yeah. after that. Because I don't have to worry. Like I'm not yeah. making a move. I'm not sure if she's going to or not. Yep. It's just when she's like, yeah, I am. It's like, awesome. Great. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I mean, I just find now, I just, I'm too lazy. I just don't care anymore. Too lazy, yeah. I am. I just, because I do the sets. I'm working every night, four or five nights a week, or seven nights a week, four or five shows a night. Yeah. And if a girl's like, well, when are we going to go to dinner and stuff? I'm like, it's not going to happen. I'm just too busy. <sighs> yeah, you're like, I you work. don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, come by. My feeling is you got to put some, you got, the girl has to put some work in it for me. Yeah, me too. You got to really kind of put it out there for me. Exactly. Let me know. Yeah. You know, let me know. Yeah, if you're looking for a boyfriend, that's cool, but I'm just, I can't, I'm not going to. Yeah, I, I can't just do know that. Ahead of time. I can't do that. Oh, that's hilarious. So, okay. Um, when you wrote your songs, this is just about fucking touring pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, that's great, though. Yeah. When you wrote your songs, had a song ever come to you? And like, this is how they do it in the movies, where you wake up and go, or you you hear um, a, a jackhammer, and you go, da, 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 and a car horn goes, meh, meh, and you're like, yeah, da, 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 meet me, da, 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 meet me. I don't want to leave you. I don't want. To oh yeah, you get mad. Do you get shit like that? Well, here's the deal. It's like comedy. That's what they do in the movies. Once yeah. your brain is always thinking comedy. Yeah. Everything's comedy. Now, oh, really? when you're with music, you know what I mean. Like yeah, you're at yeah, the yeah, store, yeah, yeah. pink yeah. dot, and you go, "Look at this guy's mustache." Shigeki that told me this. Yeah, you see, when you do comedy, you see the world through idiot colored glasses. That's it. You're like, "What can I see is wrong with exactly. everything around me?" This guy Shigeki, I was taking jujitsu. This is small, like 150 pound Japanese guy. And he would crush me. He would yeah. tap me like 80 times in three minutes, just over and over again. And he goes, you got to start thinking about these moves like all the time. When you're in the car, you got to be thinking about this. When yeah. you're watching TV, you got to be thinking about these moves. And I was like, bro, I've already got something for that. Yeah. I got my comedy for that. Yep. That already takes the place of all my, all my mind. My mind That's waters it. to bits. That's all my mind is now. Yeah. It's weird. Like, I don't have anything else. It's just comedy. It's amazing when those people do comedy and acting and music or something like that. Like, yeah, like right Whoa. now, I don't even really uh, do movies much because Donald I'm... Glover does that full rap band or whatever, yeah, uh, hipster rap, and then full comedian, and it's like wow. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I think you could do it later once you you're really rolling. But me, I could I couldn't do that. I, I'm just well, it's just tough to get your mind into all those things. Yeah, and it's I'm just into like so focused on yeah. one thing. It wouldn't seem to matter to me if you were like super rich because you still have to like 
to do them well, you really got to give it all your time. Yeah, your like, mind time. Like I don't even like to go to concerts anymore. Why, like, really? <clears throat> I recently went to. Um, I went and saw uh, My Morning Jacket. Right? How were they? Oh, they're amazing. Yeah, I, I love band. that fucking band. That's a good band. I've seen them many times. But so I go to Santa Barbara Bowl, uh, and I go out there. Yeah. And I'm watching the show, and I'm like two songs in, and I start to fucking just look at people, and I'm and I'm now I'm on my phone writing like bits and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, oh, t- really? I'm writing about Tevas. Yeah. I'm, I'm writing about. You're up there, yeah. You, yeah. But you need stuff like that. You need new new you uh, inspiration. You do. Stuff. That's right. It's great to go out to that because you to get do weird stuff. Things. Otherwise, you're just at the store, just a, just a comedy club every night, and you're like it's the same things. You don't yeah, think about you're anything. right. You got to get the fuck so people out. People start writing bits about comedy. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? just horrible. It becomes their life, and like nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. Hear about your job. Yeah, you got to get in. It. You got to get out. But man, it was really my mind was. I didn't really watch much of the show because I was like, look at this fucking drunk dick. Yeah, you just keep a fucking notebook in your pocket. That's for it. That shit. It's that's embarrassing when you pull it out in front of people and you have to like hide yourself. Yeah, I'm like notebook. writing down shit, like journaling. I love music stuff, man. I did a bunch of like festivals in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, like me and Jeff went to that Oceaga Festival in Montreal. Um, and you know, went backstage to Death Cab and, and the Flaming Lips, and it's just like it's so fucking fun. It is. I did the Ottawa Blues Fest with Big J Okerson this year. Yep. And you just go watch all the bands, and then he explained this to me because he went on tour with like Corn. I think he did like the Warp tour. Right. And so he did comedy on it. Yeah. So we hung out with all those guys, and we're like, oh, where can we stand? He goes, we can go backstage. I'm like, no, we can't. We don't know anybody. He goes, Ari, right, we're in this festival. We're the artists. Yeah, hell yeah. The artists are allowed back there. I'm like, yeah, no, but we're comics. He goes, doesn't matter. They don't know that. They don't know how they don't know who the we fuck know we are. are. Yeah. They just make yeah. artists. I'm like, okay, good enough. And also, when and we are, I guess. When you're in music like 25 years like me, yeah. I was explaining this to someone a couple of nights ago. I went and saw Cake. I'm backstage. You know cake what I mean? cool. <clears throat> they go, hey, how'd you get backstage? When you're in music 25 years, the guitar player Cake was in my band, okay? Oh. The sound guy did sound for my band. Wow. It's the same people are all in the oh, biz. Because they work at a venue for 25 years. That's right. So you just go like, oh. hey, what's going on? It's the same guy. So like, oh, how you been? I'm pretty So good. when you put that much time in, you and know And they just walk everyone. you back there. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, here, here right the in. They there. go, oh, that guy's cool. And then once you get to that level, you can yeah. never watch a show any other way. God, it's amazing there. Yeah, you don't want to be around people, you know. It's, it's fun to be in a mosh pit though. Sometimes. Oh, that's I fun like if that you shit. want to get fucking radical. Yeah. But I'm saying if you're just at a we show, we went to see the Black Keys for that for me and Jay, and yeah. uh, we realized you couldn't be on stage because the wind was kicking up so much. There was that. There was that. Um, that stage that fell. Oh a week yeah. Later on Cheap Trick. Oh yeah. We were there the week before. It was super high winds and stuff was like flying off. Anyway. They said nobody on stage because they had to delay them for like an hour. Yep. And so we were walking in between the pit and the stage. I love that spot. And we're like, this is awesome. That's better. First of all, you see the whole band. They're right in front of you. Right in front of you. And you can turn around and watch all the fucking people. Yeah, yeah, you're not seeing the state. You're not seeing the band from the side. You're seeing them right from in front. Yeah, straight on. You can take killer photos. Yeah. And, and and there's no one bugging. You can walk out, take a piss, come right back to your spot. Come right back. Nobody cares. So great. It's your spot. I do that at Coachella. And here's the fun stuff. Uh, they had this thing where everybody would be crowd surfing. And oh, they yeah. to the front, they would fall if it was that yeah. thing. So there's all these bouncers there catching people, sending them back into the crowd, just opening up a little gate, sending yeah. them back into the crowd. And there was like Plinko. They would come. They sometimes they start going left because you don't know where the crowd's going to take them. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes they start going further out. You're like, okay, we're safe. They see that here comes one on the right, and three guys would have to go over there. They they would always get knees or kicked in the face. And so that becomes a show. Are, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we see them all. They're all super happy when they got it and they got left. I'm like, woo! And they see these gigantic bouncers, and they're all have the same look. Like, oh fuck, am I about <laughs> to get uh, the shit kicked out of me? And the guys like come this way. And it's like, oh great, I'm not. And they all like, woo! Who's your favorite man? Band? Yeah. I don't like words like favorite because that, that yeah, I know. Imp- implies that this is always going to be yeah, my favorite. Yeah, that's true. It's like you go through periods of, you know, I've eaten salads for a while or I'll that's steak right. every day. It's like, it's not your favorite thing. It's just yeah, what I I'm go, like right now. I get right into now. phases of all different stuff. Like I'll go like. Sometimes I'll, I'll take fountain. <laughs> yeah. For a little, you know, and then I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm done with fountain. I'll take sunset. That's true, man. It's like, that's so true. to say favorite, I just don't like words like that. But I mean, what are you listening to do right now? Black Keys a lot. Yeah. The new, new album's great. Um, I like, uh, what else am I listening to? I love the Eels. Nirvana I still love. Yeah. But I don't listen to Nirvana at home. I sort of wait till it comes on the radio or play the whole Nevermind or yeah, the whole album. Yeah, then it feels album. good when you hear it. When I listen to Nevermind, I can cry sometimes. Just because yeah. it's so fucking good. A part of me is like, this is awesome and beautiful. Another part of me is like, I'll never do anything this perfect. Yeah, that thing makes me sad. That thing's great, man. Uh, Dave Grohl just did a documentary on the studio, Sound City, where where that oh, uh, really? st- that record was made. 
Some of the biggest records on the planet were made in Van Nuys at Sound uh, Studios, uh, Sound City. And they just recently closed, and Dave Grohl bought the board oh, out of there. Really? Yeah. He's like, I want it. And he did a documentary on the place. So I'm looking forward I to seeing that. Bon, bon Iver, Bon Iver, this girl got me into it. They're pretty good. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, where the fuck is... I'm trying to think of what I listen to a little. I don't know. I like sort of newer newer stuff. And then I've just recently gotten into some of the classic rock that was before my time. Right. That Joey Diaz has explained to me how good they were. And like Steve Simone got me in, like those guys got me into Sabbath. Oh yeah, Sabbath is. And before I never knew them, and it's I was weird. like Sabbath. Like other than the Iron Man stuff, they had great shit. Yeah. Like Hole in the Sky. Well, War Pigs is just like War just Pigs like, is War Pigs, unbelievable. Like, this and is the greatest song of all time. <laughs> Cake did a version of War Pigs yeah, that's phenomenal. That. It is great. It phenomenal, is phenomenal. They did one with Cake and Cat Power. So uh, great. Oh no, maybe it was Flaming Lips and Cat Power playing War Pigs. I forget which one it was now, but yeah, live shit. That's when I first started getting into stealing music. Yeah. When there was a live, like, Tori Amos stuff yeah. that I was into her in college, and I was like, There's a, it's not on any album. There's the only yeah. way I can find this is if I steal yeah. it. I got thousands of bootlegs. Yeah. Thousands. Really? I mean, Zeppelin, I got every show Zeppelin's ever done. Have you told Barris about that? Oh, yeah, I gave, I gave it to Barris. All through college, I was super into Zeppelin. I gave, sh- I gave really? Barris, like, 20,000 songs last like week. Yeah, I just got into live stuff. Now what I'll do sometimes is instead of just, like, downloading stuff, listening to the album or whatever... I'll just go to YouTube. That's the click, best way to go. And then, oh, that was a good song. Let me click another one. And then you can watch them actually playing. Yeah, oh yeah. The Animals I just got into recently. Oh, uh, Animals Don't Sleep on the Animals. They got some great songs. And I was like, I sort of heard about them, but I was like, oh, I didn't realize this was all them. Yeah, it's so weird when you realize, Their oh, these of guys got a shitload of hits. It's, like all, it's just like, wow. And that guy, what it, Burton? Oh, yeah. Bert, it's like, wow, he's got some intensity to him. That guy's an amazing singer, man. You know when I got into watching a live stuff with Simone? I asked him because I was getting into Sabbath. I took some acid. I went to a UFC. Yeah. Me and Diaz took some acid. Went to one. A UFC? Yeah. Wow. Like, that sounds like the worst idea ever. And I'm like, it was an amazing experience. Wow, that's so crazy. It was great. It was fucking yeah. great. I'm scared of acid now. Yeah, I'm scared of it too. Yeah. But like, you got to try it. Yeah. I mean, I've done it a bunch uh, okay. when I was growing up oh, yeah. San Fran, you know? Yeah. But I'm afraid of it now. Too much like, what's going to happen to me? I don't want to sleep yeah. outside tonight. I'm just older now, you know? But every time, and I didn't know their music, but every time an Aussie song or a Black Sabbath song, right. they have tons of songs. And they're like, this is fun, this is fun. But I'm like, who's this band? Yeah. I like this. And they're like, Sabbath. I'm like, oh, cool. And then like another 40 minutes have passed by. I'm like, now who's this? And they're like, Aussie. I'm like, oh, cool. And I'm yeah. like, I should get into it. So I was asking Simone about it. I was like, did, did uh, Ozzy play guitar or bass or anything? He goes, no. I'm like, so what did he do during those fucking... 85 minute solos yeah and he goes you should look at the live stuff it's pretty funny it's he sort great. of dances just around just jumping up and down come on yeah every once in a while he yells come on or yeah yep. it's yeah. kind of let amazing. me see your hands yeah he does that and then he does that rabbit jump what's the rabbit jump where he just kind of jumps like up in the air and claps his hands it's weird oh really yeah and then he has that the shirt that says Ozzy like homemade embroidered on the front of it Really? Oh, that's some funny shit. See, when shit. I knew him, I just knew him as the guy who would bite heads off chickens. He, yeah. I knew him after Sabbath. And right. when I was in fourth grade, when I heard that, fifth grade, sixth grade, I'm like, well, that's not. That's, that's not, not that it's devil rock, but it's yeah. like, it is the type of music that's devil rock. I've never been into that type of music. Yeah, right, right. I'm not into metal. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. It's metal. He's biting the head off a bat. Or a <laughs> yeah. It's like, meh. It's like. That ain't for me. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. like Debbie Gibson. Yo, man, <laughs> you did know? you? Oh, yeah. Mm. She showed that knee in that one album cover. Dude, I wanted to fuck Debbie like, Gibson fuck yeah. so bad. I, well, I just wanted to make out with her. I was younger. Yeah, I still like her. Deborah Gibson. MGMT, I like. Naked and Famous. I like Debbie Gibson. Uh, you know, uh, I, re- I, re- I read recently that she was, like, losing her home. What? Yeah. I don't know what's going on oh, with no, that. Oh, no, Debbie. Please, no. Band of Skulls isn't bad. Um... What were we just talking about before? We are just talking about classic rock. Oh, yeah. And what your favorite was. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. I said, I don't, I don't, I just, yeah, get into I, I understand things. that too. Somebody makes me an album. I get it, you get it into something at the right time. Yep. Like, I hate when people tell you, like, listen to this song. What do you think? And it's like, or you'll love this band. And you're like, Man, I feel pressure on me to like it. Yeah. Sometimes that's weird. You, just have you gotta to, get it organically. Here's what I do because I steal so much music. Yeah. Um, I'll like, oh, I heard that band, it's good. Then I'll, he- I'll download that, or I'll download the whole discography, not knowing which is the one album to listen to. Right. Or I'll do that, and I'll, list- I'll also steal, or t- whatever, get, I should stop saying that, four or right. five other bands. Right. It comes in, or it's going to download, it's going to be ready in 12 minutes, I get distracted, so I listen to something else. Right. Then I put it into my iTunes, and then I just don't get to it, to listen to it. And by the time I actually see it there, I'm like, who told me about this band? Yeah. I forget where the recommendation came from. So then my interest wanes in getting to... Like the Black Keys, for instance. Yep. I don't know why, 
but I had in my head. I don't know who told me to get it or why I got it. I think Yusuf, Nick Yusuf made me an album of like coolest new rock right. a few years ago. So that was on there maybe. And I just thought it was a, it was an R&B band. Yeah. Maybe just because the word black. That's right. Maybe the black lips is closer to that and I right. got them mixed up. I don't know, but I just like never gave them a chance. And I was playing cards one night at the casino playing in a tournament. And I was like, oh, let me give it a chance. And like two songs in, I'm like, this band is amazing. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I just I, missed it. I saw him in 03 in London. Really? Yeah. Wow. How was that? <laughs> it was in this... Off what album? Um, I don't know which record. It was one that had like some first kind of hits on it. I have yeah. it at the house. I don't know what it's called. 03. I don't know. But I remember I was really into them all of a sudden. And uh, they were playing like at the north end of London. And I had to take like a long, I mean, a long subway ride, a uh, train ride. And then I remember... I had to walk like a mile to get to the place, and it was called like the garage or something. Yeah, and in it was, London. In, How long in, were you there for? In the north, and I was—I've uh, been to London millions of times, you know, like yeah. on the road and stuff. I want to go there. I want to do comedy there for like three months. That would be great, man. You know, like get a place and just sort of be around. Not just go there for two days and see the sights. But no, no, be no, there. be there. Yeah. yeah, I was there one time, three weeks straight. It's great, but I'll tell you what—you need money, man. It's oh, like really? It's expensive? Oh, it's worse than New York? Way worse than New worse York. Worse than it's, New York? It's double New York. Wow. It's weird because everything's pounds, bro. And it was double. It was two to one. Now it's about one sixty three, you know, dollar sixty three to to yeah. two. So you go to a movie and it's fifteen pounds, it'd be thirty dollars. Oh, but shouldn't it be only seven pounds? Yeah, like, that, like that's, prices? yeah, that's how you want it to be. But no, they they back in the day they, really? they were wise. They were Does like, everyone make more money there? It, it's just crazy, man. It's God. it's like Thai food in a movie's ninety American dollars. Christ. Yeah, you're going, what the fuck? So you need money, man. And how they, were they um They were I remember I went to this place and it was probably held three hundred, but they had like nine hundred in there. Shoved in. Yeah. And the walls were just sweating and they destroyed. It's amazing when certain bands like in LA, New York, and Chicago probably Oh. people know about the cool bands that aren't out yet. That's right. I remember the White Stripes for a while. I said I went to that show, but I just I just, yeah. uh, I just, heard about it. But it was like, no one had heard of the White Stripes, yep. except the 2,000 coolest people yeah. in LA. And so yeah. that, it was like the Viper Room or the Roxy or one of those. Yeah. And it was just swamp, sold out immediately. And like, what the fuck? This band hasn't even had a radio hit yet. And it's like, yeah. trust me, they're about to be humongous. I think Jack Makers. White's the best guy out. Did you see that thing down. he did with, uh, with that country singer? Was Unbelievable. It Ronstadt? No, Unbelievable. Who was it? it well, uh, I forget her name. Uh, it, well, he, he's done three country chicks now. He really? did the older lady. Yeah, the older lady. Yeah, I got that record. Now he's done two people since then. Wow. He's As got a producer, a new, he's great. A new, new single just came out. Really? But that guy, the band, the Racketeers. Racketeers, yeah. Rock, that yeah. band was like, to and me, a modern day Zeppelin. Is he still with Racketeers? Now he's solo. He's solo. And okay. it's unbelievable. Yeah, the Racketeers was really cool. It was like, wow, this is the same guy, same yep. lead singer, different sound. Yeah, and it was like Zeppelin live. Because they See, were acid a, rock for a minute, yeah. then they'd be blues, then they'd be uh, hard rock. And I then think Black Keys is close to Zeppelin. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, yeah, it's that blues heavy rock. Heavy blues rock. Oh, that's my cocksucker blues. It's oh, finished. I can't wait till you watch that. It's finished. This when I heard this this last because um, I got I got into uh, Black Keys the the last record with the black cover yeah right before that record came so then I downloaded that after I was getting this other stuff yeah. Brothers um, got, I was like I love it but then once you like a band you're like the next album like at what point are they I don't think done? the new ones is good dude you're no way I you love like it. the new one yeah. better than the last one not better right it's right. just really great but this when this when you start with this when you just start with with this sound like. Let's see if it'll go. Oh, it's frozen. Is it? Yeah. I love that That's shit. just garage. That's like old school Detroit, you yeah. know, MC5. That's just such a cool way to start an album. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm in. You know what the last record what was track three or something like? Uh, Wait, let me get the whole one. About the girl, something girl like next time or next. Oh one? yeah, my next girl. That fucking song. Wait, that I thought that was of the last album, of the of Brothers. That's all the last record. What? That's all the last one. Off the new one? Not the new one. The last. The oh one. yeah, that girl's yeah. great. That that song's great. That song is amazing. Next girl. It's it's all the weird thing is. It's all about just um, chicks. That's it. And just how they hurt them, and they don't want to hurt them again. How about what's great is they're like older men hipsters. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Those guys are not 20, man. They're like 40. You know? Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, they were playing. They got delayed by an hour. And everyone started going home. Like, they're not playing because the rain was coming down. The right. Tent, the, the fucking stage was... And I was like, all the people from Montreal from Just for Last were there. And, uh, yeah. So great. Two guys, man. Two guys. Two guys. But I remember being backstage underneath the tarp. And uh, we were like, uh, I saw them. And everyone started to leave. And I was like, I'm not going. I'm going to nope. stay and watch yeah, the band. Hell yeah. Until they call it. Until they say, oh, the loudspeakers, this yeah. is not happening. Because I'm like, why haven't they said anything? So I saw them in their trailer, like, looking out. And I could see them looking over here at, towards where we were. I'm like, are you guys, are you going to gonna go on or not? Do you know yet? And he wouldn't say anything. I'm like, come on, just fucking answer me. Yeah. You know. You yeah. Know. If we were just like, we're seeing. Then yeah. I'm like, cool. I don't know. Oh, fuck. Awesome, man. Um, God, I love that band. They're great, man. I like, I, I mean, there's some great music in the last 10 I'm years. I'm liking rock a lot more now. Yeah, yeah. I love rock, man. Because you know why? It's not uh, so prevalent everywhere. Yeah. Where hip hop's everywhere. So you're like, get out of uh, here. Yeah. So you hear a little rock, you go, oh, that's nice. You know, but you know, like that New York thing, like Strokes, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, that old thing hit, you know, and that was nice for a while. Yeah. And then it disappeared. Strokes, yeah, the Strokes yeah. were cool for a little bit. Hell yeah. Strokes and White Stripes right around the same time. Like, Hell. oh, there's some cool shit now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the Kings of Leon early Kings on, you know. Great. I still like Kings no, of Leon. No, they're pretty cool. Hipsters, like, now abandon them. Hipsters I, abandon to anyone if they get too popular. That's right. But I'll tell you what, Kings of Leon, every record's totally different, and they yeah. fucking got great songs. Yeah, they do. They got great songs, man. I, One comes of those guys on, was dating a, uh, my girlfriend's friend at the time, and he was like just starting to get like, oh, this is a cool band, but no one had really heard of them yet. So great. Yeah. I saw him at the Viper Room on the EP. Uh, really? That one, they had a song called Wicker Chair. I lost my mind. I was like, who is this band? Wicker Chair? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it is so great, man. They were called the Southern Strokes back then. Like People were like, oh, they're like uh, the Southern know. Strokes. Really? Yeah, because they were kind of like... You know, a little, a little skinnered looking. They had yeah. beards yeah, and shit. Yeah, they had the beards. Yeah. And the bass player was 16. That guy was like a really? kid. Yep. Yeah, and man, they, and they've yeah, changed fun. every record, which is what was, I love about a band. Like Zeppelin, they were like, you know, blues. Then the next record, they were like country. Yeah, I was talking to uh, uh, this guy who works at Pink Dot about yeah. it, and he was like some band. He goes, yeah, they sound different now than they used to. I'm like, yeah, because people grow up. Yeah. The shit you're making at 24 is not going to be the stuff you're making at 34. And why would you want to do that? Yeah, and p- but people want... Unless like, you're Slayer. If you're a band, you're like, I like this sound. If you're That's a fan, right. I mean. And you want that sound to just keep going with new songs. But yeah. it's like, well, they want to explore new things in their art. It's boring. They Unless you're ACDC stuff. or Slayer or Ramones... Yeah. I don't. I, I don't want them to change. But the other bands yeah. take it somewhere. Well, they're let's past see, the idea. Of yeah, let's see now. where you go. Yeah, yeah. But I get worried whenever I hear an, a new album by a band I already like. I'm oh. like, is this gonna be like you? Like if you two comes out an album, I'm disinterested. Yeah, I don't me care too. Anymore. I, I used to care. love them. Yeah, me but too. Octung now, Baby. It's like nothing. Have nothing. you seen the Octung Baby documentary? I think so. A long time ago. No, no, it just came out. Oh, then no, I haven't. Oh, dude, it's the guy that oh, you got to see it. Really? It's called Up from the Sky, I think, or Looking Down from the Sky, or some dude. That movie is moving. It's, really? Yeah, because What's the band was. Do you know? Uh, just type in uh, U2 documentary. Um, oh, you got to do something different. Octung, yeah. I don't know. But that's how you can get the name of it off Yahoo, oh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. get it. That's what I'll do. Um, but it's, 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 it's fucking moving, man, because the band was ready to break up. Really? They were done. Then? Yeah. They were done. They hated each the other. Octone Baby Days? That was right the, after Rattle and Hum and Joshua right, Tree. And, yeah, and they were sick of each other. Whoa. And, and, and. From the sky down. That's it, dude. Let me tell you, that movie will change you, dude, because it's so. The thing I like about you two, I don't like them at all now. I love, their, I love them. Yeah, but I used I, to like them, and then everything yeah. got too good for them. But the thing Beautiful I love day. about them is these guys were fucking Maybe around we since they were 13. Yeah. You know, in, in Ireland, like yeah. kids. And, they, and they're brothers, man, like in, in a brotherhood way, which is so but hard. But I'm always afraid of a band. At some point, a band has to become that, where it's like, if like the Rolling Stones' new album, like, who cares? Oh, yeah, Halo's new album, yeah. who cares? Who cares? But like, at some point, all your albums are great, and mm-hmm. then you have to... There has to be a breaking point where you're like, now we started the downswing. That's right. And I was afraid... The Black Keys would be there. I'm like, oh, please don't be the sucky album. But I was like, oh, right. no, this is great too. They're still in their yeah. good music making stuff. Yeah. In 30 I, years, I'm sure I'll be like, I don't care about your new album. Yeah, it's true, man. I, but you know, whenever I think about that, 
I yeah. just put on one of their classics, and I thank God I got it, like Octung Baby. That record great. is unbelievable. It's great. That Acrobat song, I mean, you know, it, it, the lyrics, everything on that record, the sounds, the cover, the tour they did, everything was unbelievable. That tour was the one with all the, that was the yeah, Zeropa took before mushrooms. Zeropa, right? Yeah, I took mushrooms at that tour. That was the one with all the TV the screens? The cars, the, mini, the minis flew over the crowd. They had the TV screens. You the TV change screens. The channels. And then Zeropa was almost in response. It was the same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah It was exactly. like, we're going to do this, but on the album itself. That's and right. not just the, the, the I saw both thing. those tours. Here's what I heard. Maybe you know about this, or like what your thoughts were on it. This is what Jay Okerson told me too. It's like the bands when they're on a, on a, a summer tour, or festival, whatever. The stage, yeah. everything they have behind them. The, the I remember my sister went to see Pink Floyd. She goes, a giant bed flew across the stage, yep. and this inflatable pig blew up. Yeah, the band pays for all that. Oh yeah, that's the venue all doesn't pay for any of it. Fuck no. And they can do as much or as little as they want. That's right. So, so then cool bands just like, I'd, I'd rather put on a good show. I'm going to pay for all this shit. That's right. But that cuts majorly into your profits. Well, the wall, I just went and saw the wall, remember? Yeah. And yeah. Then, now it's coming again. That costs, uh, in the 80s. 80,000 bucks? No, it was a million a night in the 80s. They made no money on the wall tour. They only did 10 dates. It cost them a million dollars just a million to put a it night, all up. And they just lost. But because they like, we couldn't make enough tickets. They wanted to, to do it. the most epic show of all time. Wow! But they lost. They had like fifty people in the band. You know, they got the, the right. people come out and singing. They got the people and building the wall. Pay people to well, that's cost a million dollars. They did all that. Pay people to set it up and everything. But those tours cost million. People go like, oh, these tickets are outrageous. It's like, hey, you know how much it costs to put on a tour? What song was that you're talking about? Not the first song. Which one? Oh, on Octung? Yeah, Acrobat, man. That. That song is... This is a good way to start an album, too. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. When you watch that movie, it's going to move you, dude. I think really? it's one of the coolest rock movies about a, a making a record. You can't believe it. Because they said they're, they're in there. They don't have nothing. They're like fighting. They have no really? songs. They're hating each other. And then one day, they get into one. You one know, is song? it getting better? And the song starts going, and the guy, the producer's recording it, and he goes, oh, fuck. Like he knew he had something? Yeah, he goes, this is a smash. Really? And that was it. After that, they were like, look, we're here for a reason. You know? And they made this record, and this record, look at I get goosebumps, man. Just hearing it? it. it blows, yeah, great music can do that to you, right? It blows me away, dude. It can definitely do that to you. It blows like. me away. Yeah, this was a good song. Oh, and I took mushrooms on at this show. Oh, really? Show. Dude, mushrooms are the best at concerts. They are the best. Especially outdoor summer concerts. That's it. Outdoors only. Yeah. I don't like them indoors. Why? I don't know. I feel like the roof's right here. You know? Oh, it's not that part. What? I, I feel like the roof's on oh, me. Oh, really? And, and the people, like, outdoors, I'm like, ah, oh, air. You know? You know what I feel like when I'm at an outdoor concert and I'm on a mushrooms? I can tell who else is on mushrooms. Oh, yeah, you can you feel it. You see people, like, moving or sit on the ground, like, oh, yeah, you're on mushrooms. <laughs> you just certain smiles. You see people, like, yep, you're on. And then you're like, all these people are not. Like, oh, there's a person who's on. You just know. Yeah. I loved it, man. I remember I took them. It was on something. They're it was something. raining. It was pouring rain. I didn't care. You know? And you didn't the, give a fuck. Yeah, the rains. I didn't care at all. And it was a weird tour. They had uh, Public Enemy open. Public Enemy open for you, too? Yeah, on this tour. And uh, another band, too. Uh, Bjork. What's, what was her band? Sugar Cubes. Oh, yeah. Yep. That was the bill. How weird is that? Wow. So I'm on the mushrooms Sugar coming Cubes on. Public Enemy? Yeah. And, and I took the too? mushrooms. I start to come on a little bit while Public Enemy's on. And I'm like, whoa, this is angry. Uh -huh. You know, they're like, fight the power. And you're like, this fight isn't right. The, and I'm going, whoa, this is wrong for me. So I yeah. cruised out for a while and then came back in. I did. I took the, the first time that I took them alone mushrooms. It was in Ottawa. Uh, the first Blues Fest I went to. God, I hope they take me back this year. I've gone the last two years. Yeah, you took him alone. Well, I got him. I got him in Toronto. Yep. This I know. I have. I know the comedy scene in Toronto. I'm friends with the comedians. There. Right. Um. And I took a train from Toronto. It was Toronto. Was Montreal was doing a Toronto comedy festival. Just one year. It didn't work. Whatever. But right, after right. that, they sent me to Ottawa by train. I'm like, if I'm going by train, I can take whatever drugs I want. Oh, that's with cool. Me. That's right. You know. So I got mushrooms there in Toronto, and I was like, I'm taking them for... And I was there with me, Mike Wilmot, um, who's a great Canadian comic, but he's only Canadian and right. English. He never comes here. He said he's scared of America, but he's right. fucking awesome. And uh, and Tiffany Haddish and maybe one, uh, Bobby Slayton, but he doesn't do mushrooms. I didn't yeah, yeah. think he I would I love Bobby Slayton. Yeah. Not the guy to do mushrooms with. No, no, no. <laughs> you not should do something. Not the pit not, bull. Yeah, you don't want to hang out with him when you're on mushrooms. <laughs> um, 
but so I got three doses worth. I asked the lady who gave them to me. I was like, oh, give me enough for three people because I know Will Model want them. He likes drugs. Right. And then I know um, just in case somebody else or one of the other comments like, oh, I want some too. I was like, well, no problem. Here. I don't want anybody feeling left out. You know? Um, so I get there. I, t- I take my dose right before I go on stage because I'm going, it's, it's Slayton and then me. Right. And then the rest of the people, whatever. But I want to like, as soon as I'm off, I'm going to only have like three hours left of, of music after that. So I want to start tripping. Yeah, yeah, right. But I don't want to fuck up my set. So it's yeah, like. that's right. So the show was about to start. So I took them. Yeah. And then the show started five minutes late and Slayton went like five minutes long. Oh, no. So I didn't time it out right. So yeah. halfway through my set, I'm like. I yeah, that feeling thing, my mouth. Yeah, your back of your teeth hit first. Something like you that. You ever notice that? They kind of feel a little floaty and you're like, oh, these are coming on. Yeah. That's how I always feel. The back of my mouth tingles. Yeah. Like my teeth actually feel Maybe. like they're floating. It's I'll weird. I'm thinking about the actual effects the next time I do. I'm like, how that's they come what out? happened to me. Whenever I come on to them, I go, oh, there they are, yeah. and my back teeth start coming on. And, and then, then you tell like, here we go. I got whatever I have right now. If I got a jacket, I'm gonna put it away. Put yeah, it away. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're gone. Because you know what's coming minutes. up. Yeah. So then I went over, and then I gave some to Mike, and Mike's like, oh no, my wife's here. I don't want to do any. I was like, what? Oh, I was doing them with you. Oh no. This was before I had gone on stage, but like you know. Yeah. I was like, well, I just took all mine. He goes, I'll have a cap, you know, oh. just to be nice. But I'm like, fuck. I'll have a cap. So I ended up eating, eating all the rest, eating all the rest, and just having way too much. But then I was watching, who's that old dude who did a, like a, a, he's just a guitarist, but he did an album of just with everybody big at the time. Oh, Santana? Santana. Yeah. So he was playing all these old people. I was like, I'll take mushrooms and watch Santana. Yeah. Tons of old people watching. Yeah. And I'm like, this is unpleasurable for me. Yeah. And then this band, Stars, this Canadian band. I know Stars. Yeah. I got a recommendation. Yep. Somebody's like, the Canadian people know the music. I always ask people, like, who's cool to watch? Yeah. Because I don't know. So I told me Cage the Elephant this year, and they were great. Right, right. But uh, so I wandered over to Stars, sat in the ground, barely anybody was there. You know, we have other stages, and yeah, I just yeah. fucking laid down. And, it was fun. and then I wandered around Ottawa in the rain a little bit. That's cool. Just wandered around Ottawa until the sun came up. Have you ever had a bad trip? On mushrooms? Not on mushrooms. I had a bad trip once on mushrooms. Now, what's that like? It. What happened was I ate like a couple grams. Yeah. And then uh, like an hour went by and nothing happened. I was like, oh, these are bunk. Yeah. And I had like an eighth. So That's I, the, worst, the worst thing that can happen is you don't get high. Yeah, exactly. Not you get too high. Yeah, the worst, yeah. thing, worst case scenario, nothing kicks in. So then I took the other gram. And yeah. I was drinking shitloads of beer, and I remember I was at, at this guy's house playing poker, and I go, ah, fuck it, they didn't work. I'm going to go to bed. I'll never forget it. Whoa. So I was mid-sleeping, and wow. I woke they- up, and the, the wall, my bed was facing this way, was open, and I was, I've never had this happen ever on mushrooms, like hallucinate like acid. Yeah. But it was like. Yeah, it's oh. not really that hallucinate. No. It's, you see swimming in things. That's right. Like if it's I'm watching Venetian brides, instead of being straight down, they'll kind of like. Yeah, the wavy yeah. and, and, and to me it's more like sensory. Yeah. Like, whoa. Yeah, I feel good. You start introspective. <laughs> but this was radical. The wall opened and my bed was going through it like like a slide? It was moving like a roller coaster. Wow. And I was going, ah, ah. I just woke up to that. Like, holy shit, what the fuck? And I go, I'm on these fucking mushrooms. Whoa. So I close my eyes again, right? I go, oh, no, I hope that goes away. And I open it, same thing's happening. Well, uh, yeah, you want to close your eyes and like, go away, whatever's happening, go away. And it wasn't going away. So then I sit up and I'm like, oh, did you, fuck. Did and you know you were on mushrooms then? Or would you, I, knew, did you I, okay. I knew I'd taken them. And yeah. I was like, whoa. And it had been like an hour I'd been sleeping. And they woke me up like, hey, wake up, fucker, for this yeah. ride. And that was it, man. I ran down. I was like, oh. I'm fucking tripping. And the guys are like, I'm like, take me to the hospital. And they're like, nah, dude. Like, just, Why? You're just re- tripping. Yeah, they're like, relax. And I'm like, no. And it was like four hours of nightmare. Like I, Really? And then I was scared of them a long time. I was mushrooms. Like, yeah. And then I learned something in Amsterdam what? that I never knew. They outlawed mushrooms in Amsterdam. You yeah, know that's why? weird. Because somebody jumped out of his fucking building. That's, yeah, that's, that's... I was like, he didn't kill anybody himself. Who yeah, cares? Who cares? Totally. Nobody's jumped out of the building before? And you could buy the best mushrooms in, in Amsterdam. Really? Oh, you go into the store... I hope that's not true. I hope and, I, I heard wrong. And they have, like, all the different ones, and then they describe the highs in a booklet. Like the, the Hawaii. What? Yeah, they'll tell Wait, you. Wait, what? Yeah, they'll tell you how hardcore they are in, in a number rating. Like the Hawaiian ones that are like this big. That's a great idea. Yeah, and they'll tell you exactly what they do. They'll say heavy hallucinogenics on these. Wow. These, lots of laughing and just fun. And then they'll say these right here, kind of speedy. That's uh, how pot is now. I could tell them. Yeah, that's pot. right. And People that's how they have them uh, wow. in, in Amsterdam. 
and, and they show them, and it's weird. The smaller ones are way fucking stronger like than those ones like we get. Sometimes. We get those kind of brown, stinky foot ones, yeah. you know? But Well, I've had penis having mushrooms that are like way stronger than the other mushrooms I get. Right. And so people ask me like how much to take. I'm like, I know how much to take of these. That's right. But it depend- I don't know what strain you got, man. Yeah. I don't know what strain. I don't know what all the strains do. It's true, man. And they tell you right there in the book. They like probably it's- good crops and bad crops. Yeah, absolutely. And even, they got pictures. Even uh, chili peppers, like hot peppers. Yeah, they're all different. But even the same, even the jalapenos, they aren't the same heat on every one. No. Some are hotter than other That's jalapenos. That's right. And it's just like, just depends on where they grew or some from the same bush. It's are true. Hotter, it's uh, true, uh, man. Less. I took mushrooms one time three days straight. Wow. How yeah. was that? It, it was great. But the third day, I didn't really get that high yeah, anymore. You start, yeah. But I wanted to. I, I was really in a weird phase of my life. Like, I could live on these. Huh. I'm going to see what it's like. Just take them every day. Because I had heard Chris Robinson from the Black Crows took them for 30 days. Wow. Straight. And I was like, I want to see what that's like. And by the third day, I, I was just mushroom head. Like, really? your head's just like... Bleh. Like, you just don't know what's going like on. Like, have been drinking too long. Yep. It's, it's like, I can't, I don't want to And do you're this. not really that high, but you're more. I think more... Eric Marino took some for, like, months, months. It was, like, a cap at a time. Nothing crazy, but, oh, like. Oh, yeah. It's. <laughs> but, like, all the time. Would yeah. Take them. That's weird. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I think your brain needs to open up. It takes them. And then a month later, you can do them again to really get that cool yeah. effect. I would say take them every six months to a year. Yep. Help, help! It helps reset you. Right. Every time you get mad at people for the wrong reasons, there's right reasons to get mad at people. Yeah. But sometimes you're like, I'm holding a grudge because why? Because you forgot to pick me up from the airport five years ago. Yeah, fuck that. I'm like, that's a cool guy. I should just say I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I used to be like that too, and now I find that if you hold anger in too, you get cancers and shit. You know, people die. That's what they yeah, say. You I know? don't believe that. That's, well, that's, I'm just that's saying a, that's what people want to believe. That yeah, like you get sick or whatever. But you know what? To me, it's like ah, who cares? It's also like you're punishing yourself. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Uh, Pete Holmes, actually, that guy you were talking about, he told me he had his. We like he likes mushrooms too, and he told me he had his first bad trip on mushrooms. I was like, what was that like? He told me he was like, this is what problem. He goes, with all that being said, still a great time. Yeah, just not as great as That's it would have right. been. Oh, I had on a, a great trip. story to tell. You yeah. know what I mean? And I still can't believe that the wall opened up. Wow, and my bed was flying through the wall, and I was going whoa, and it was it was like it dropped off a mountain. And there was nothing there. And I was like, ah, I'm like wow. trying to hold on and shit. I wonder and, if you took different types of mushrooms for three days in a row. Like, yeah, that would be interesting. You know, because I'll have... switch up my pots. No, yeah. I, I don't take the same. That's why I have lots of different kinds all around. Yeah. You get a tolerance to it. Yeah, you do. And it's the same, a different kind. So you high. mixed it up for different, just different brands, different strains. Yeah. I, I, I bet it would still, work. Yeah, but you can keep smoking. It keeps hitting you hard as long as you switch up. I wonder if that would too, mushrooms. Yeah, probably, because they're different, I think, different psilocybin or whatever, different, because mm-hmm. it's poisoning you. That's what they are. They're food poisoning, yeah. which is bizarre, you yeah. know? Reap said that once, but he did a story show about, we did psychedel- psychedelia. We did yeah. that twice. And um, and he was like, you know, your body tries to expel it. You're going to throw up because it's, it's poison. You've yep. eaten poison. Yep, that's what it is. I mean, it's not going to do anything bad to you other than, like when you eat regular poison, you might barf, you might go blind. That's right. This, the effect is, your mind will see things that aren't quite there. And, and what's amazing is whoever took them first, you know, got sick. Oh, no. And, and then, then was, they're like, like, looking at it later like, you know, that wasn't that bad. Have you ever taken peyote? Mm-mm. Have I, you? I've taken peyote once. And Let's that, save all this for your podcast. That's mescaline. Yeah, we'll do yeah. that later. You know, we'll, we'll save the drug things. But mescaline. That's what you want to talk about, right? Yeah, yeah. drugs. What's yeah. your podcast name, by the way? Poolside with Dean Del Rey. So you're on that network. That's right. Toad uh, Hop. Toad Hop. Yep. Me and Tripoli and Tebow just started. Yeah, I just, just missed you today. I had. Yeah, uh, I saw, when I was trying to find the website, I saw you on there with Tony Katane. Yep, Tony her, Katane. Right? I had her. And I'm going to have her on my podcast. And then podcast. the second show was John Bernthal from The Walking Dead. So you just do two hours in a row, do two shows? I did today, yeah. And you split them up? I split them up, yeah. That's two separate shows. Yep. Why not? That's the way to go. That way I get a couple. Of, get a bunch Because if, if I get good guests, they can all come on one day. Yeah, you're already there. Yeah, I'm there and they come up. and then like I, When I'm home for a while, I go on the road sometimes and I'm like, I can't interview people. Yeah. So when I'm home for a few weeks at a time, I got to like get like four Stock or five interviews done. Yeah, because you know, if you don't, if you don't have one every week, people forget. Yeah. They just, and then they don't come back. I do mine every Monday. Yeah, and exactly. so the one we're doing, the sports one, is is, is every Tuesday. I guess we're going to start. I didn't even know you liked sports, which is weird. They said, "Oh yeah, yeah you're in the sports," which is strange to me. It's just I don't talk about it with certain people. Yeah, comics. Exactly. I noticed this early on when I got to L.A. Yeah, a lot of comics don't know fuck all about sports. Yeah, that's they couldn't right. even name you what 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 sport 
like the Blue Jays play. Yeah. They were like, I don't know, is that a team of something? Well, I grew up in the Bay Area, and I saw many 49er games. I saw the great 49er games, but also Giants baseball. I went nonstop. Really? And when they won the World Series, me and Al Madrigal were probably the only guys on earth that couldn't believe it because we talked about how in the day, if you wore a Giants hat, you know, people were like, ah, oh, loser, because they never they won. Bad. Ever. My grandfather was always a big uh, Atlanta Braves fan. Yeah. And they used to be terrible. One year they went from f- to, from worst to first. And the Twins did the same thing in the other division. Yeah. In the American League. But um, until then, they were always just the worst. And then they got that, those five great pitchers. They, they, you know, they won all the yeah, championships. Oh, yeah. Like, Schilling and all those guys. But, um, but um, I remember him watching when they were still shitty, watching a triple play turned against them. And he just, he just like... <sighs> He just sighed and sucked. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker. And they won the World Series, and he died like before the next season started. Oh, well, that's he good. Got he to, got to he see was, it. He was hanging on for the one time. That's awesome. Yeah. For the Giants to win, it's so weird because they never, ever won. I mean, you know, they went to the World Series. We yeah. had the earthquake, and oh, they yeah. get blown out by the A's instantly. Then, by their hometown. By, by hometown. Town rivals. Oh. Yeah. And then four years ago, they're three outs away. From going, and the Angels, Bonds misses the catch four years ago, whatever, and the Angels go. Really? Yeah, and they go to the World Series instead of the Giants, and they had it. They the were Angels, only, were they in the... They were playing the uh, uh, Anaheim, wait, who were they playing? They were playing, uh, I can't remember who Whoever they were. Whoever it was, yeah. Yeah, they were playing, and anyway, Bonds missed a ball, and uh, that was it. Sports. You know? It's so frustrating sometimes. Oh, uh, when you're you like, love a team and you're lose, three outs like, away oh. from going to the World Series, mm-hmm. you know, and then you never get back again. Yeah, it's not like, well, we'll do it again next year. Yeah, no. When the Yankees, I'm a Yankee fan, when they lost, when they were like one out away from from beating Boston. Oh, yeah. Boston won that game, won a couple more and went yep. to the World Series. I and like, then, what? Yeah. But at least we had won a few. Yeah, you got a few like before. a So it's like, ah, oh, it sucks, but that's no, okay. Yeah, you've been not there like, a ton of times. That's your one chance. Yeah. When that Cubs, when that fan stole the Cubs, went away from them. Oh. It's like, they ain't going back very often. They ain't going back. They hadn't been there. You yeah. know what I mean? It's we just like. Better. That's a big market. That is. And, and the 49ers this year, you know, so close. Yeah. And football, that, the whole team turns over in five years. That's right. So it's like, you might. You're out of there. That might be your only shot. And injuries all over the uh-huh. board on football. Yeah. You right know? It's all a question of how healthy you stay. So if you do and you don't win, you're like, fuck me. Yeah, exactly. Because then two guys get traded, another guy gets hurt, and then your whole team's different. Yeah. Yeah, nice. there's no chemistry or whatever. I'm trying to think, what, is there anything else you want to tell me about the music? How, 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 like how, how much did you make? How was it? Um, we're going to not get to everything I want to get to, but who cares? Yeah. But like, like, how much would you be making when you're just getting by in, in music? Well, for me... I'm sure like, some years are better than others. Yeah, like when, when mu- this, one of the reasons I quit music was probably guys like you that just take music, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. What happens is, this is the weirdest thing that people don't really realize. You're, you're sell- you only survive from selling records when you're on the road, you know what I mean? Like you start selling records. And tour- yeah, yeah. And, and that's how you can really make a living every year. But this is when it, uh, I had to get out because you go from making, say, 250 grand a year to like 100 grand to all of a sudden like 30 grand to like it was way different lives yeah and you've got four dudes and gas and hotels and food yeah but this is what what was funny was at shows i would be out there selling cds yeah and i would listen and i would say uh hey you want to buy a cd and they go oh no my brother downloaded burned it for me i love it though really yeah Burned it for me. I mean, he might have. He might have bought it. Right, right. But he just like copied it. Yeah, yeah. And it, and wow. then everybody would have. It and they you got go, that big where people already knew your stuff. And they don't really. They don't realize that what they're telling you is, hey, I just I, I just stole the shit out of this. Yeah, and there's no money to you now. Whatever you do, you do. But I'm just saying. Imagine if somebody came to your show. Oh, I know it's wrong. Yeah, I know yeah. it's wrong. And and then they said, hey, you want to see me? They go, no, I saw another guy do your jokes earlier. I'm mm-hmm. good. You would be like, who did my jokes? You'd be pissed about it. And you'd be fucking screaming at him. But the problem is, on the other hand, it's the easiest way to get music. It's the easiest way. I understand way. it. And to find new music, it's like, I'm just not going to get these. Right. You know when I started stealing music? Yeah. In college, I worked in, um, I worked in this place called the North Hill Service Desk in this community of dorms. Right. And we would have to put people call with numbers. If they wanted somebody's phone number on campus, we would give it to them. Um, 
they, if they lock, if they lock their key in the room or something like that, right. we had spare keys, but they, yeah, they had to sign it out. You had to give it back to us. Yeah, leave your ID or whatever. And packages wouldn't fit in the mail slots. Any any size package, even like it's a box of envelopes, something like it's too big for the mail slot. Right. So you have to come. We would call your dorm when a package came in. Let's say a package came for Dean Del Rey, and I'd say, okay, Dean Del Rey, I'd find out local, what dorm he's in, what room, call him, leave a message, say, hey, it's North Service Desk. We have a package for you. Yeah. And then we started realizing we're the ones logging in the packages, and we're the ones giving it to them. Yeah. We can just order BMG in Columbia House. Oh, yeah. Well, that's different. And we're the one. Well, it's the first one. It's the, and then we yeah. order it to like bathrooms yeah we'd be like and so whenever we get bmg we're like uh who's ann arundel yeah and we'd be like oh yeah that's me you know <laughs> we just make up names and we all just get as much music and then i just got in the mood of like no you don't pay for music yeah yeah there's no consequence although we i did get fired it's weird though because america really thinks they think the weirdest step they think one thing i always hear them say is well those record companies make so much money yeah that's all fucking justifying your actions yeah. right right because right. what are you trying to get right. back at record companies for right. making money but let me tell you so you should steal your ipod also yeah fucking so bullshit the record company it, it needs to make money to put the records out i'm not saying they need to make all the money like they do yeah but without them who's going to make the records that right. you could, you could steal, you know. Yeah, it's like it's like oh, the network makes all the money off the sitcoms. Like yeah. they make a lot, but yeah, yeah. Who else is paying all these actors to be on a show? So then the second thing is too, the band's already getting robbed from the record company, but now they're getting robbed from their own fans. So now the ticket prices have to go through the roof. That's oh. how it goes now, because they go well. We need to make all our money on touring because people are just stealing the, so the ticket prices go up because of that. One hundred percent. Wow. Because they need to make money to survive. So and now, so, since they're not doing it off, off that's sales. right. So now there's no more ten dollar concert. It's one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I remember when Green Day was talking about um, I was talking about Pearl Jam, right? And how they wouldn't play because Ticketmaster. Would that's right. Surcharge. And Green Day, which I think took the wrong stance, they're like, "Why don't you just lower your prices then?" Yeah. But we did. We offered cheap prices, like. No, that's not the problem. That's, yeah, the problem yeah. is someone taking 30% of a ticket charge just to facilitate the selling of the ticket. Yeah. I got to piss. Oh, yeah. Go in there. I'll pause it. Cool. Boom. We're back. That's that fast. No one even noticed. Yeah. It was on, it was on uh, pause. Um, but anyway, that's why the concert ticket prices are up, you know? That's why? Uh, it, it's not yeah. inflation? It's that, that's it. Well, it's the like, bands only make money on the road now. They don't make any money from the records. And iTunes, they don't make a lot of money on much. that. It's gotten too much. Too many yeah, people everybody still. Neil and, Brennan explained this to me once because I was like, "What's the problem with people? Um, like you sell like the say Chappelle show stuff, yeah, on, online, you know, whatever." Because you sell the iTunes probably more because it's so easy to get. He goes, "Yeah, here's the problem though. Um, instead of selling uh, season one DVD, yep. somebody go on iTunes and just buy the Charlie Murphy sketch." Yeah, that's right. So they that's, pay two dollars instead of twenty five. Yeah, they've cut up the product. Yeah, and then it's like now you're not making as much money. They don't. They don't buy the bad things. That's right. The ones it, they don't want. It's like why ACDC and a couple other bands won't do iTunes because if you want Back in Black, you got to buy the Back in Black record. They're not going to let you just buy one song because it's going to devalue their catalog. Yeah, that's what it is. And that's so what, they make you buy the whole album? They make you buy the whole album. But in their chance, that whole record's great. But, you know, like on a band like, let's say, these dumb bands now that have one song, I can see why a lot of people steal music because most bands well, just have song. one fucking song. People steal because it's easy and it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Here's, okay, what would you say? Because I, I won't, I won't, like I won't even know these bands. Yeah. I'm sure there will be some albums I would buy. Let's say, I'm start over right now. If a band I really like comes out with a new album, yeah, I'd probably buy every fourth one of the bands I really like. Right. I'll, I'll, but it's so it's like I will buy some, yeah. But I won't even know about a lot of bands. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I do is I it's just so there. That's what I do is now. I just go on to iTunes and listen to stuff. You know, like the, the samples are long now. Oh, really? They're not like five seconds. No, they made them like two minutes now. Want some popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Caramel corn. It's got marijuana in it. Oh no, I don't want any of that. Either. Oh. I'm on my bike. Oh. I don't want to be like all. Oh. Yeah, so it'll be a better drive home. But you know what I've been doing now? Yeah. I go to Amoeba and I buy records for two, three bucks. You buy the used ones? Yeah. And I buy all the great shit. I just sold all my old CDs. Yeah. And they pay you like 25 cents a piece to 10 cents a piece. Oh, you yeah. get nothing. Nothing. But I buy Giant vinyl. Giant for like 100 bucks total. I buy vinyl for like $3. Oh, you buy vinyl. That's still. what I'm buying, yeah. Now, does that sound really better? 
Well, oh, yeah, it sounds better. But you have to hit, do it with this. Well, I'll tell you the problem with vinyl, which I forgot all about. I just re got a turn. Just, no, how fast side one and two go. So you're sitting here talking, all of a sudden it's like. Oh. It's at the end of side one. You go, fuck, already? 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, usually you play the whole record. It's an hour or 30, yeah. you know. But it goes by so quick, and then it gets annoying. And you go, ah, I don't want to get up and fuck with that. Let's just turn on <laughs> iTunes, Yeah, which is weird. But I like vinyl. It's fun. You well, know, like the old band, like, you know, to get like, to me, ACDC on Power Age record and hold the vinyl and look yeah. at the cover and, and the My shit inside. I just got this, um, she made this art project where she took some old um, poem from like the 17th century or something. And there was like an opera written about it. So she made a bunch of paintings based on the poem slash right. opera. And then, uh, you know, Bonnie Prince Billy? No. Uh, Will Oldham is this musician but kind of mellow music really right. cool so he made a couple songs about about it and it was just in the back of this book of paintings was this vinyl record wow it's also supposed to go along with this right right yeah it's cool but nobody has vinyl anymore nobody has the record players so i just got it. into it you know because what happened was i was <clears throat> i was in uh palm springs and i was at this uh like a you know like a coffee shop or whatever and the guy put on a record. They had like a, it's like a hipster place, and put on a record, and it was uh, the Who Quadrophenia. Yeah. I was listening to it, and I was like, God, that's fucking cool. Why on record? Why is it cool? On well, record? you could just really hear some of the instruments and stuff in the background that you know, because uh, iTunes is really squished. So okay. wait, okay, because I heard I shouldn't. I'm so unprofessional. Yeah, a mouthful. Of oh, it's all pop, good. Popcorn. <clears throat> Henry Rollins was talking about this. Yeah. He goes, it's, you're not getting the real music. That's They're, right. They, and I'm like, what are you talking about? It sounds perfect. Yeah. You're missing all these nuances. And it's true. Really? Yeah, because the, when they squish it down, the digital message, it's, it's too small. So stuff gets lost. Really? Yeah, they squish it. and you, What if they got better capabilities? Well, that's what Neil Young's working on right now. They have better capabilities to do something. Yeah, Neil Young said still, that he so. was working with Steve Jobs uh -huh. on these these downloads that would take all night. Yeah. But it would be the full message. Right. So you get all the... But it would be too big. It would take up too much room on people's stuff. Well, they were trying to figure a storage way for it. Well, because when you think about it, three <laughs> megabytes before, yeah. that's about how long a song is. Yep. About 112, 124 you know, KBPS, whatever it is. Right. Three to four megabytes, something like that. Five, maybe. But in the old days, five megabytes was plenty to have for anything. Totally. And now it's just that. It's like, there's got to be a way to compress it better. Well, that's what he's richer. saying. Yeah. He's, he's saying they're, they're going to figure a way to where you... you look. What was that? Is that in my kitchen or outside? I don't know. I think it was outside. Okay, good. Then I don't care. But... Uh, <laughs> He's, Neil Young's looking at a, a way where you get the whole thing and then like iCloud stores it or whatever, you know, the, the new storage for iTunes. It's, I think it's called one, Match or whatever, Match. Uh, it's, it just, just came out where it matches all your stuff on uh, iTunes so you don't have to store it on your computer anymore. iMatch, it's called. Check it out. What does it do? It, it stores all your iTunes up in like a... The cloud? Yeah. Like the cloud, but called iMatch. What if the What if you haven't paid for the stuff? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> that's, I don't think you can do it then. So I don't know about that. But anyway, Neil yeah. Young's dream is to have these full, full, uh, full analog kind of sounding. It has the real sound. It has that's all the right. So you're cutting out instruments. You're not cutting out instruments. You're squishing it so small that the small stuff in the background sounds get lost. Wow, so you can hear that on vinyl. How about on tape? Could you hear it on tape? You can hear cassette? it on tape, but yeah, cassette, but not like vinyl. And CD not also? CD's even worse? CD, uh, Neil Young hated CDs. Hated CDs. Oh, he wouldn't even put his shit out on CD at all. Because he said you can't hear it. He said it's the biggest piece of shit. He goes, you're getting wow. robbed if you buy really? a CD. Oh, yeah, and he... he he uh, he fought against it forever, and then he said, "Okay, you can have some of my records, but you can't have these two. And one Which of two? them was on the beach, and the other one was, I think, not fade away or whatever it's called. But on the beach is my favorite Neil Young record ever made. Really? And he never would put it out. Wow. And then finally, when the 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 shit got better, he put it out. But he still hates it. But on the beach is this." masterpiece, miserable record he wrote about L.A. That, oh, really? Hey, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Now, it, do you think normal people can, can tell the difference? No, no. 
So now, only if musicians. you grew up in the '60s and the '70s and the uh, '60s and late '70s, yeah. you really know vinyl. Yeah. But the people now they don't know it because they never heard it like that. But when you do hear it, like I hadn't heard it in maybe 15 years on vinyl, yeah. and then there I was in that coffee shop. I was like, "Holy shit, this sounds great!" Yeah, and now when I'm at my house, on the beach is phenomenal. The song. Um, the song uh, on the beach is insane really yeah and there's one um what's the tracks i don't know hold on see you in a second i can't play it yet though it's great man the cover is like a cadillac in malibu buried in the sand with the fins out neil's wearing a yellow suit really yeah and it looks great <laughs> i'm allergic to you or <laughs> something cool maybe I don't know on the beat oh here here's this it's a uh... Revolution Blues that's the song man Revolution Blues okay that's track three that song's so great hmm. I'll have to listen to it yeah so he um, he hated it you know really and he fought against so you don't think normal people could tell the difference no no, because they musicians. haven't heard the other way, so yeah. they wouldn't know. It's just like this is how I feel when like somebody when, when somebody I see leave a comedy show, yeah, and some they like some super hacky comic, yeah. And hacky has two definitions: one hack is like stealing, and the other sort of definition is just like you're just doing stuff that it's sort of like, you know, prison rape jokes, just stuff you sort of heard or they're just sort yeah. of like Facebook. Yeah, it's just sort I'm of single. It's too typical, right? That's what it is. And I'm sure I have some of that stuff in my act. I yeah. definitely do. We all do. But, but like, a Facebook joke would be the nightmare of all nightmares. Maybe. That's what's sort of new, though, right? No, maybe not. Well, I'm maybe just saying, not. every guy, that when you when people are starting out. It was like, everyone will have a joke like this. That's Monica right. Lewinsky jokes for a while. Yeah, they yeah. Hack. It was like, yeah, you wrote it, but it's like, nobody yeah. cares anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when I see a fan like the hacky person and the really cool person, it's like, what the fuck? How can you like both of them? Yeah. But it's like, they don't see the little things. That someone who really knows that it's form. the same way so with music okay. too. Okay, that makes sense. Because you got one guy who's like a nir- uh, Nirvana, but he'll also buy Nickelback. Yeah, and you're, and you're going, like, what? "What the fuck? Why are you buying Nickelback?" And they yeah. go, "I like this song." And what they tune into is not the stuff that the, nope. the, the music fan is tuning into. They don't understand that Nickelback just fucking basically said, "Well, let's just kind of take their sound and do it with our." songs nickelback i feel is like a poor man seven mary three and seven mary three is not a great band <laughs> seven mary here's here, here's the load you got seven mary three yeah you got three doors down yeah you got nickelback uh-huh. you have uh uh all that era of these bands that uh, saliva uh yeah. The one that the Nickelback guy did, the they Spider-Man were all like, song. Like, they weren't copies of Nirvana. They were copies of the copies of Nirvana. That's right. So some people were influenced by Nirvana, Mud Honey, and maybe they'll put Little Pearl Jam. Yeah, fuck yeah. And it's okay to be influenced, but then you're influenced by the people who weren't really doing that sound originally anyway. It's just like, then it's like gone. Yeah, that's the worst when you got a band. It's like Blink-182. That, that power punk or that pop, pop punk, it's yeah. like, okay, whatever. But they're sort of like... Yeah, they, they, they originated. Damn it, whatever. Yeah, and then I the mean, new bands that do that, the ones that are going out with Ashley Simpson or whatever, uh, some 40, you're like, this isn't right. There's something missing here. Uh, uh, all the bands in Orange County, Yeah, they call it punk rock, and you're going, punk rock? That's, Pop punk or that's something not, like that. Yeah, and it's, punk. it's all these weird bands. I think Avenged Sevenfold is one of the bands. Really? And you're going like, what the fuck is this, <laughs> man? <laughs> yeah. But, you know. There's also great music, so you... That's why I want to be like, when people are like, oh, you just don't understand, it's young music. I'm like, no, no, no. I like this other band that's the same time period. Yeah. It's just these people aren't good. Your <laughs> yeah. tastes haven't developed yet. That's right. That's right. Here's a weird thing I read one time in the LA Times. Three, uh, three Doors Down. They had sold more records than anyone in the year that they... Three Doors Down. Yeah, it was this band, yeah. Three Doors yeah, Down. I a little bit. I think it, their song was... Uh, I don't know. It was the closing time, was it? Now, was it Won't You Be My Superman? Was that them? No, that's Fish. Uh, no, not that. It's another one. No. Um, so they uh, they play the wheel turn, and there's only like 900 tickets sold. Whoa. And and they were like, this is the biggest band. Yeah, how? But they were a faceless band. 
there was no one to really grab on to. Oh, like really? you looked at the guy and went, I love this singer. Because the singer looked like me. It was like short, ugly, oh, yeah, like a need... fad dude. Whenever I say Nickelback, I feel like that. I'm like, that's right. that guy? And see, with Nickelback, you Feathered couldn't hair. pick those guys out of a two-man lineup. You know yeah. what I mean? You're like, Nickelback is the singer, that Chad guy with the weird hair. Just looks like people at a rest stop. That's it. So they had an interesting thing where... People bought the records, but they wouldn't go see them because they didn't really care. They just liked the song. Uh, it wasn't yeah. something they really wanted to go yeah, also see. Also, it's like it's like every song's a B plus or a B minus. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah I like it's it. Fine, you but know? nothing that you're like, oh, I gotta get out to this. You know what it is? It's just a song to get you to the next song on the radio. That's good enough not to make you change the station. Yeah, I guess that's all it's become. I feel like a lot of art, uh, movies in particular, but yeah, music too, where it's like they push not what's going to be the great, but what's going to be good for it the most amount of people. Yeah, mediocre. Yeah, so that's why television is sort of sucky, but it's like it's not over anybody's head. That's right. No one's going to turn they it off. They dumbed like, uh, it down, which is weird because... So you'll I'll, never get like a Steinfeld, though. You'll never get like a new... Nope. Yeah, you're like not going to get... I mean, we're lucky we have Louie and Breaking Bad. And but those are all like cable this. now. Cable's yeah, the only one that can cable. do that. Because they can, they can go on the small market. We're like, we don't need as many people as you. That's right. But we need a loyal few. The and Chuck that, Taylor model. Uh, yeah. That's what I just say. Chuck yeah, yeah. Taylor has been sold and resold and resold over and over and over again. Because instead of put, putting out a business, people are like, look, most people won't buy these shoes. Yeah. But there is a market. Yeah. We can make some money. And we will not lose money on Chuck Taylors. Yeah, they make them in China now. Oh, yeah. They don't even make yeah. them in the USA not anymore. Not even American. Yeah. Which is weird, you know what yeah. I mean? But it's like, the, the, always be a money maker, so just keep putting it out there. It's yeah. like, that's what cable stations are, where it's like, let's just make a cool show for the hip, cool people. Fuck yeah. Breaking Bad's amazing. Not Mad everybody's going to be into it. Some people are like, that. nah, it's too dark for me. It's like, okay, then don't watch. Just yeah. you got, turn on, you let know it what? come on soon. You can watch uh, whatever, you know, is on regular TV. Yeah. I think Breaking Bad's the best shit I've seen since The Sopranos' first three seasons. It's pretty seasons. badass. Sopranos' first thing. I'm glad you said that, because after that, it got kind of sucky. Yeah, right. I watched so, it later, because everybody got into it, but I watched yeah. it later, and I'm like, this took a serious turn. Red yeah. said it the best. He goes, once the mom died, that show should have been over. That's it. Because you get up to, even when Bashimi she was took too, over. She was too big a character. That's right. And when Bashimi took over and directed that one season and was on it, uh-huh. that kind of got it going again, but Bashimi. it was just shitty. Yeah, it wasn't really there anymore, right? The, 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 the first three are really insane. It makes you feel like that's a real mob family. You know? It's just cool. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, they don't kill for like nine episodes, but when they do kill, you go, whoa, whoa like those are something. fucking killers. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they don't overdo it. That's what I have a problem with a lot of mobs. They don't. Overdo. It's like they don't kill every fucking day. That's right. I don't that's have right. any idea what I'm talking about. No, that's true, though, you know? Yeah. And they don't. They, they whack like one dude in 20 years. And it, My feeling is like when people say, like, do you know who I am? You nah. won't say that shit if you know who I am. It's like, no, but I guarantee you wouldn't be yelling, do you know who I am or what yeah. I can do to you in a public fucking building. Yeah, I kid. Uh, first of all, no <laughs> Fake one. mafia. The real mob guys. They don't say anything. They're just e- like, ever. hey, get, later when he goes home, make sure he, he dies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? it, they don't have to see it coming. They don't even say anything. It's yeah. like a code. It's like a, like some kind of weird this and then bam, the guy's done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, mob's pretty cool. Dana though. White was telling me about this guy in Boston. Was like this, this this fighter. They had these fighters. These guys just fight in bars. Yeah, you know, not for money or anything. They just get into fights. Yeah, and there were two great guys, whatever. But one of these guys got hit over the head with a bottle, like a full bottle of of, of uh, vodka. So like it had stuff in it, so it didn't even break. Over That'll the fuck you up. Knocked him out. Seven, eight years passed. Ten years passed. Whatever it was, this guy's been in AA. Redo, redid his life. Not the guy who got hit. The fighter. This right. other little scroungy guy. One day, that fighter is outside an AA meeting. He comes out. He goes, hey, John. Let's say John. He goes, oh, hey, Bill. What uh, What are you doing here? He goes, you know what I'm doing here. <laughs> and he's like, bro, that was that was like 10 years ago. I'm a different man now. Yeah. And he goes, you're going to get your beaten. <laughs> yeah, revenge. Yeah, and he like, put him it. in the hospital. He's like, yeah, we're not, you don't get away with punching me. He carried it that yeah. long. He's like, that's, that's what I do. I get back at people. That's fucking wow. crazy. God, you know what, man? If more people city. were like that, people yeah. wouldn't pull as much shit as they do. No, random fucking big men would just punch people in the face That's all right. the time. That's right. Ugh, it'd be a horrible life. It'd be Everywhere terrible. Everywhere was Boston. Okay, God. yeah, like that North End. Yeah. You know what every- I like here? You bump into someone at a bar, you go, I'm sorry. It's like, no, it's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, totally. And just move on. Nobody tried to bump anybody. Yeah. That North I End, that no Boston reason. kind of vibe of like, first of all, anything they ever say is this. 
Fuck the Yankees. That's yeah. how every conversation starts. And you're like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? We're at a restaurant. Yeah, but fuck, fuck the, the Yankees. <laughs> you know, like, wow, all right. It's weird. Boston's weird, man. I've seen people with bloody noses, just blood streaming down their faces, and they're just like, well, let's go get pizza. Yeah. It's like, they're like, what? It's just like, it's Saturday night. We fight. It's, uh, fuck that. Oh, kill yourselves. Yeah, fuck that. Mass suicide. It's just fucking lame. I'm sure there are plenty of cool people in Boston, but there's plenty of fucking D-bags. There are, man. I spent some time there, and it's just like, wow. You know, the people are just... They, it's weird. They're so, like, sports-oriented. Like, one wrong team or something, they want to fight you. Like, the team gives a fuck. Me and David, yeah, me and David Taylor were going to do... We had this prank show all written up, and yeah. one of them was go, go to, a, like, a Boston bar sports bar right with full yankees gear and just root for the yankees oh you know where you got to do that on that what? strip right behind wrigley you know where i mean um what's the field called um the green monster their field fenway fenway you, well right behind it they got a street there yeah. and it's all bars yes yeah, so place like that just yeah, try that's to where you gotta go start someone to beat the fuck i tell of you here. what that'd be some of the funniest shit ever i don't think you would even make 10 feet because you just get the drunk fucking... I think at some point someone knocked the hat off your head. Before they really started with you, they knocked the hat off your head. You go to pick it up, they kick it away. Yeah. And you're like, okay, hey, like it's you just starting. You just get that blue-collar plumber guy, and he just beats you yeah. with a pipe, Once you one know? guy starts, and they all join in. That's it, man. Because that whole street there is straight, fuck the Yankees. You're not even playing the Yankees today. Yeah. You know? That's how I feel about the Lakers at all times. No, you don't like the Lakers? Fuck the Lakers. <laughs> Who do you like, Clippers? Well, I hate the Lakers. No, I'm right. A, I'm a Hornets fan. A Hornets fan. Back from when they were still in North Carolina. Right, right. God, we've never been, we've never, we challenged once for a championship. Like once we came like second in the league regular season. And then we lost <laughs> Didn't in the second it, what, round. Was Jordan there for a while? Like He was there as like a, 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 a coach or something? Yeah, but that's in New Charlotte. Oh, I gotcha. Uh, our team left, went to New Orleans. Went right. To City, New Orleans, and then the new team came in. Jordan. So Christian there. That team lost its fan base when their owner, I think his name was Shin, maybe it was George Shin or maybe they'll go right before George Shin. He got caught fucking his like maid or something like that. Right. And people were like, oh, we're not going to support the team anymore. That's not very Christian. Wow. The owner. Yeah. Got and that was it. doing something illegal, by the way. Yeah. Just cheating on his wife. People were like, nah, we're not supporting that team. <laughs> and they couldn't. It was, I mean, still some people came, but enough people were like stuck on like, well, we can't afford to keep this team here anymore. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live there. Yeah, Charlotte's a cool city, but just yeah, but that's kind Bible, of witch hunt stuff. Bible belts you know? is like too much. Yeah, Bible belts brutal. Yeah, I can't believe how racist the Bible belt is. It really is. It's bizarre. Oh, so you must have got all through that, huh? I well, I did a film with Ice Cube three years ago. You know, yeah, in Shreveport, and I've never seen this before. We were in traffic, yeah. and, and it was Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, I had just flown oh, in. Oh, I don't know where this so, is going. Yeah, yeah, so we're in a van. Going to the set, and I'm like, what the fuck is this traffic? We're in one spot for like an hour. Yeah. And the guy goes, Klan rally. Whoa. And I go, Klan rally? You're just kidding, right? This is three years ago. And he goes, no, nah, man. Whoa. It's up here, and they're blocking. They're protesting Martin Luther King Day. Now, you know, uh, Shreveport is 59% black. Really? Yeah. So I don't know, first of all, how oh they don't God. just kill these guys. But you know why? I figured it out. It's because most black pe men yeah. aren't murderers. I well. <laughs> never forget. When I know this amazing racist stuff, like, how'd you not get your ass kicked? I'm like, because people don't want to kill. Yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. So listen nothing. to this. We get up close, yeah. and there they are on the side of the road to the right of the window. And they've got those robes on, robes. just like you see, what all nice embroidered with the fucking logos and shit. Yeah. And this girl Klansman, this is how I knew she was a girl. She came up and put a flyer in through the window and went. She said, uh, "Drive your car." Join the Superior or something and drop this flyer. And I used to have it. And I, I lost it. I was oh, so you pissed. Should have that. But it had all this shit about why you should join the Klan. Like what's wrong with blacks? What's how the, everything? They're, they're the dirty power. and all this weird shit. And here it is, middle of the day. And I'm like, "This is three years ago." This is three years ago in Shreveport. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, "How are these guys not killed?" I, I, I've never seen anything like it. And I'm fucking 46, man. I've never seen the Klan. I grew up in the Bay Area. That the, you know, just doesn't exist. One of know? the coolest things I ever saw, someone was filming something. Uh, we were playing softball one, one day, a bunch of comics. And uh, there was a basketball court right next to us. And there was this guy in a Klan outfit there. And he was dribbling around. And this oh. white guy was guarding him. And you could tell he was black. Uh, yeah, yeah. When 
the, the guy in the clan outfit when he dunked the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Some of his, like, the, the clan guy dunking. Yeah, you see a little black skin, but it was so fucking funny to watch this clan. Were they filming it? Yeah, someone was filming yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But he was just crossing this guy over. This guy was trying to play defense. Just yeah. Crossing him over, running around, doing spins, and just fucking jamming behind his back. Right. It'd be like, it's really awesome to watch a guy in a clan outfit do that. That's great. When I, when I was, I don't know, years back when I first saw you, I didn't even know you were the Amazing Racist. When uh-huh. I first started going to the store, I didn't put it together. I'm and- not the Amazing Racist. I just did that. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't put it together like that was the guy. So yeah. me and me and the guys used to watch that shit on the tour bus all the time. Like, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> so I'll never forget it, man. I was the, My buddy came to see me at the store early on. And you were like in the hallway. He goes, dude, Amazing Racist right there. And I go... <laughs> Holy fuck, oh, I see is. a guy all the time and that is him. <laughs> I mean, because that shit was insane, man. It was insane. I can't remember. What year did you do that? I don't know, 2004, 2003. God, man. I, don't, I, I should know when it was, 2002 maybe. I don't know. Unbelievable. Can't be 10 years ago. He was where it was right at the beginning of like viral videos. And how many hits do you got on him? Are they still on YouTube? No, they get taken down. Oh, they did? Why? They didn't because YouTube doesn't get irony. Oh yeah. Um, they they leave up. They have an order of what they'll take down. The Mexican one always take that down. Yeah, right away. Um, the black one they take down a little a little less. The dry cleaner one. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. The Muslim one they'll keep up. And right. The Asian one they'll keep up. Now, I mean, well, it's all the same tone. Yeah, yeah. It's all totally. pretty much the same tone. So they're yeah. pretty much saying, and yeah. they do it by complaints or whatever. Yeah. Like, uh, Asian racist is not as bad as as a uh, Mexican racist. Unbelievable. Or black racist, it's just not. That's crazy, man. Yeah. And what? How many hits was the biggest you ever saw on it? Like a mil? Uh, no, no, way more. There's oh, one. Right. There's one. There's one <coughs> video on there that the only Mexican one that's up. It's like two seconds. It looks like it's the whole thing, but then yeah. you play it goes and it's done. Yeah. And that has like four million views. Wow. Just some shitty copy of. Where do you have them now? I have my website, arthegreat. dot com. If you go to videos, so I put them up there. Um, it's so funny. Yeah, it's retarded. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. Now, now, were the other people in on the jokes? Uh, sometimes we tell him like afterwards, um, right? Like the dry cleaning guy, was he yeah. in on that? A lot of people were in on it. Yeah, yeah. Because he looked at the camera. Yeah, yeah. It was a tough one. But sometimes we would get like people's uh, like uh, 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 the fat guy called Fat Albert, whatever. It's like we would ask hit the manager or the owner of the place, yeah, if we could film there, get a location permit from him. It's like yeah, yeah. And like, and when is your black employee working? Yeah, yeah. And he would tell us and not tell him. So it was like there's no danger. We're allowed to be there, but right, like, right. The, he wouldn't know. You know, <laughs> so like, what the fuck is going on? And the one thing I would never do, I hate in pranks. I hate the reveal of like, yeah, ah, we're just fucking yeah, around. Fuck that. No, let it go. Let it be harsh. Yeah, well, that's. Like that's I thought it was on. real shit. For, yeah, I thought you it. were just a crazy fucking yeah. guy. It was mostly fake. <laughs> yeah, but it was unbelievable when I first saw it. My buddy was like, "You seen this?" And I was like, "No fucking way!" Back that guy's like, What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, the one where you go, I think the liquor store. Yeah. That one, man. Uh, and then the one where you pick the guys up. That's the Mexican one. That's the one that got me the most death threats. Right. It gets taken down the most. <laughs> Fuck, we went forever. All right, man. Two and a half. Well, thanks. for thanks. Uh, what's, your, uh, what's your Twitter account? What's, uh, at Dean Del Rey, D-E-L-R-A-Y. D-E-A-N. D-E-A-N, D-E-L-R-A-Y. Okay. And, like, Do- uh, like Donna, Lana Del Rey. No, she's R-E-Y, thank oh, God. fuck her then. Yeah, fuck her. Um, you know? I like her. Those couple songs were good. Yeah. Um, what else? Do you have a website? Uh, no website. All right. It's only 2012. Yep. <laughs> Twitter's, I'm, I'm building a website, actually. <laughs> okay. But Twitter, you're <coughs> on Twitter's D- where it's Dean at. Dean Del Rey. Dean Del Rey. Okay. And then I got the pool side with Dean Del Rey. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. On, 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 uh, on every Monday, Tuesday. You're going to do it. When do you want to do it? Um, Next Monday. You here? What time do you do it? One o'clock. Well, we're going to start doing ours at from four to six every Tuesday. Right, but uh, you want to do a, a Monday at one though? I'm saying Tuesday, and then I can just stay and do mine. Okay, okay. So the next Tuesday, I have a guest though. So uh, okay. after, are you going somewhere? No, I can do Monday. Soon? I can go up there Monday. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can totally do that. Okay, cool. And then we'll have lunch right there. Oh yeah, because I had pinks today. Wait, we're all set to go get Dodger dogs, and they're like, no, no, we're Dodger dogs. It's pinks. Yeah. Yep. But you know what? I got like a card there and they give you discounts everywhere. Oh, yeah. They said they're going to give us that. Yeah, you get that. So it's called, it's the Toad Hop Network. So That's go right. To ToadHopNetwork.com. Toad, to, just like it would spell ToadHopNetwork.com. Yep. And my show's Poolside with Dean Del Rey. Yeah, the website's pretty self explanatory. It shows where everything totally. is. Totally. And, you can, and you can get it on iTunes, too. 
they just started that, right? That's right. And so you can subscribe separately just to your podcast. That's you don't right. Have to the whole. Network That's right. You don't have to take the whole thing. You can just type in Dean Del Rey on iTunes, and it comes up all the shows. So you can watch live if you want to watch see what, live. What a uh, Tony Katane looks like now, or you can. Yeah, she looks pretty good, she man. Doesn't look bad at all. Wow. At all. Every once in a while, I'll see an old video when I'm looking at stuff. Yeah. It'll be like a live thing, like you know, playing at the whatever, and she's in the background. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, what? She's hot. She was everywhere. Every cool party she was at. Yeah, and she's really nice. Yeah, she comes to ta- David Taylor's barbecue sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then she hangs at the like, comedy store. Is Tony Katane here? Isn't that weird? That David Taylor's boys in the hood like yard. <laughs> I know David Taylor's got the bo- total boys in the hood yard. It looks yard. like that, just all dirt. Oh, I love that. I always wear my worst shoe when I go over there. Oh yeah, it's gonna get dirty. Yeah. I wear these white chucks because I wanted to dirty them up. I don't yeah. think they look at all white, so I'm like, I'll wear them there. Yep. I'll get bad. It's so boys in the hood, man. <laughs> I can't believe it because I'm just looking around. Why'd you I- hit me, Mama? Yeah, well, why where's hit- still boy? <laughs> Hey, thanks for having me on, man. You're welcome, Dean. That was really uh, cool. Yeah, I'll hey, do it Monday. I'm a big fan of your shit, man, so yeah, it's, thanks, it's man. great to do it, for real. I love watching you funny as shit, man. Thanks. I wish I, wish I could convince myself of that. No. <laughs> well, yeah, of course, that's everybody's demon. Um, all right, Rad, I'm going to blow my nose. Thanks, man. All right, well. See you, bro. Work.com. It's called Full Side Chat. Which is Full Side with Dean Del Rey. One of those two. Uh, it's also available on iTunes. Uh, I just did it this week. Um, so it was fun. Uh, and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Seriously, please subscribe to this on iTunes. Uh, hit subscribe. I don't know if you can do it on your iPhone, but you can definitely do it on the iPad and your computer. Um, listen on Stitcher. Tell your friends about it so I can keep making these uh, and people will keep coming to see me on stage. Uh, I'll go again, go check out all the dates on AriTheGreat.com and please come to my storyteller show tomorrow, um, February 28th. If not that one, then March 27th. But just make plans. If you're in LA, that should just be the thing you do the once a month that I make it. Bobby Lee, there's people, by the way, who I, I ask certain people about certain topics for these shows. Like, I'll ask somebody, like, hey, do you have any stories about, I don't know, uh, overseas? We had one about overseas stories. Um, and people might be like, no, I've never, like, funny comments might be like, I've never gone overseas. Or I went, but it was just a st- layover. There was no story there. So I was like, okay, cool. I won't, I won't have you. But I have to ask them, do you have a story for this topic? But there are some people, like Mark Marin for Heartbreak or Bobby Lee for this topic for Shame, where I'm like, hey, Bobby, do you have a story about shit? Um... Uh, what I mean to say is, are you available on the 28th? Because he's got a shitload of stories about it. He's he, Bobby Lee gets down. So him, Mary Lynn Rice Cup, Dylan Brody, Moshe Kasher, um, and Johnny Pemberton. They all have great stories. Pemberton told me, by the way, that he has a great story already. I didn't even have to ask him. So please come. And that is it, everybody. Um, I guess, you know what I read? I had a lot of fun like looking for music for this uh, podcast episode, so I re-recorded. I usually record the beginning and, the, and, the, and the, the intro and the outro and then start looking for music, but I had so much fun looking for music that I wanted to mention as much. Um, so I, it's too bad. I could only choose uh, four songs. Um, but hopefully you enjoy those. But of the three, you might already know. And the last one, I'm going to have Dean Del Rey uh, play us out. So off uh, off Lone Mountain Serenade, uh, sorry, off Lone Mountain Serenade. It's uh, it's Dean Del Rey with uh, with the song Highway. Take it away, Dean. And thanks for tuning in, everybody.
Yeah. 